Hello everyone and welcome to this course. In this course you will learn Dart and Flutter with Firebase and of course with payment integration. Now about the course requirements, to follow along without any difficulty, it is better to have some Flutter bases to catch up. This course will cover how to build a fully functional app with an admin panel that are ready for deployment and commercial use. And of course everything is explained in a very detailed way. And you will have access to the resources, so make sure to check the resources for each lecture in order to get the source code. And sometimes I added some links in order to help you understand better. Now, if you feel that I'm speaking fast, you can come here and change the speed of this video. You can slow this video or make it faster. So you can change it as what you want and what suits you. And finally, you can access the full source code on GitHub. It will be available on GitHub, so you can clone it to your local machine. This course is fully up to date, and as I do with all my courses, I will keep this course up to date. So by the end of this course, I'm sure that you'll be able to build your own apps from the scratch and deploy it on the stores. In addition, in here you will have the Q&A section. So if you get stuck, make sure to check the section and read the previous questions in case that you might have the same question. So you can check the previous asked question. And of course, if you have a new question, feel free to ask me and I will reply as soon as possible. Of course, you can reach me also on my social accounts or on Discord. And the links will be available also in the resources of this lecture. So make sure to check it. Now, who am I? My name is Hadi and I am a mobile developer where I already have a master's degree in computer and communication engineering and currently I'm doing another master's degree in data science and artificial intelligence. I have already several courses on Udemy with five stars rating and I'm using Flutter for many years now and it is an amazing tool and a great language for mobile development where it saves a lot of time. So this was all for this lecture, but before that I end it, please don't skip any lecture in the future. Why I said this? Because all lectures are depending on each other's, and you might get lost if you skip any. If you feel that you are good enough in a flutter, it's okay if you want to skip, but make sure that you check the latest resources in order to be able to follow along. So this was all as an introduction. In the next video, or next lecture, I will explain how this app works. So I'll see you there. So before that I start demonstrating our application, I want to tell you that you can download this application and test it by your own. So this link will be available in the resources. So make sure if you have an Android phone to install this application and try it by your own before buying this course. And of course, you can check the other applications that I have. I will also do some separated tutorials about it and leave the links in the description. Hi everyone and welcome back. In this tutorial, I will demonstrate for you how this app works. So when the user open up the application for the first time, this screen will be the first screen to be shown. And of course, the first time the user will not be logged in, so we must handle the add to cart and add to wish list. So we will not allow the user to add to his cart if he's not logged in. This is why if I press on this button, I will get an error. It says that there is no user found. So the user must log in first. So what do we have in this screen? We have this swiper in here and we have this on sale widget and we have this feeds widgets. So for the on sale widgets, of course, in here we have the products that are on sale and everything is coming from the Firebase. And down below we have this feeds widgets. Now we are showing only four products for the feeds in here, but if the user want to see all, he can press on browse all and he will be able to see all the products in here and he will be able to search. For example, if I search for something, it will appear like this, but if I search for something not found, a new screen will appear and look like this to tell the user to try another keyword. Now, if the store is empty, we will show an empty screen in here and we will show a text field to show the user that there is no product yet in this store. So of course, now I cannot show it to you, but later on during the development, you will be able to see it. 
same for the on sale widgets if we don't have any item on sale we will show him here a text field and in the on sale screen we will show him an empty screen so we will show him some kind of ui or friendly ui to tell him that there is no products on sale now for the second screen in this bottom bar the user can navigate using the category so the user if he wants to see fruits for example he can press here and only fruits will be shown in this screen and of course he can search in here and for searching only the search will be applied on the fruits category not for the all the products now let's come back and if we don't have any product in the category or any product that belong to any category for example, in the spices, we don't have any product, so we will show the user this screen. Let's go back, and for the third screen and this bottom bar, we have this card screen. Of course, this card screen, we have it like this because we didn't, the user didn't add anything to his card yet, and I cannot show it to you now because I must log in first. So later on in this lecture, I will log in and try to add to card to show you how it looks. Now I will go back here and show you one more thing. If the user wants to see the product details, he can press on the feeds in here, for example, on any product that you want or on the on sale widget. And this product will be shown here like this. And of course the user can will be able to change the quantity here and he will have directly the price here and he will be able to add it to his cart. Let's go back now and the last screen would be the user screen. So in this screen, we will fetch the user information such as the address, his name and his email address. For example, the user will be able to change between two different themes, the light and dark theme. So the dark theme will be like this. The colors are so friendly and I will keep it light theme for this demonstration. The user will be able to forget his password and he can see the viewed in here. So if he view any product, it will be added to this screen. And for the wish list, it will look like this. And of course, because I didn't add anything yet to my wish list, it is like this. And uh, for the orders, it will look also like this if there is no orders. Now what I'm going to do is that I will come here and uh, see any product that I want, for example, or two different products, then come back to the user screen, go to the viewed, and in here we will have the products like this. So this is the will be the history of this user. We will be able to see the viewed product. Now let's go back. And now what I'm going to do is try to log in. So here's the login screen. The user will be able to log in using an email and password. He will be able to log in using his Gmail. And in the future, I might add new login methods such as mobile authentication and fingerprint. The user will be able to forget his password, of course. And he will be able to sign up. So the screens will look like this. Now I will try to log in using my email and in here I will enter a wrong password. Of course we will have error handling like this. Now I will enter the correct password. So while logging in you can see that loading screen and now I have this screen. So now what I'm going to do is I will add something to my cart. I will add this apricot here, then go to the cart, and I have it here. Now, if the user wants to add to his cart and change something, for example, the quantity, let's say 16 or 13, and add to cart here. Now we have this grapes here with a quantity of 13. The user will be able to change the quantity like this or change it directly by writing it here. Of course, the total price will appear in here like this. 
the user will be able to delete from his cart by pressing on this button. The user will be able to delete from his cart by pressing on this button and he will be able to clear his cart. Now if I order now, of course later on it will be available with the payment gateway. Now let's go to the orders and the orders will be available here with the date. Now I already added some products to my wishlist. Here it is. I have this product here. So I can remove it like this. Let's come back. And the user will be able to see his information here, his name, his email, and he can change his address. For example, if I type anything here, update, it will be directly updated on the screen like this. Okay, so I think uh, this all for the app demonstration. Of course, during the development, you will see more things. But for the app demonstration, this is all what I wanted to show you. So I'll see you on the next one. Hi, everyone, and welcome back. In this tutorial, I will show you how the admin panel works. So basically, the admin panel will look something like this. So this is the main page. The user doesn't have to log in because we will have only one admin or one store, so no authentication is required in this case. And then in here, as you can see, we have four different products. But while in this store we have a lot of products, but I wanted to show in here just four different products. And of course, the admin will be able to view all the products and I'll show you how soon. Now, what if we don't have four different products, for example, if we only have one product? Of course, we will show only one product in here, but in maximum, we will show four different products. And if we don't have any product, we will show some empty widget, such as text field, or a text view, I mean. Okay, so of course, the user or the admin will be able to update a product. So once the user press here, for example, he will be able to change the title, update the price, put the item on sale, as you can see, and he can choose from this drop-down menu the sale that he wants. Of course, he can put it as kilograms, and if he wants to delete it, he can delete it from here. And then if he wants to update this product, he can press on the update in here. So what I'm going to do now is that I will change the price to, for example, 88 like this and this one I will put it like this now hit update I got this toast in here now if I go back here it is it got updated perfect so if we scroll down a little bit here for example in here the admin will be able to see the orders simple as that now, one cool thing I added also is that we have two different themes, as usual, the dark and light themes, just like we did for the application. Okay, the user also will be able to add a product. So if you press here, he will be able to add a product. For example, he can fill up everything. And of course, the user will be able to choose an image or upload an image and it's quite different from the upload an image from the mobile application so it will look something like this and the code is quite different and of course i explained it in details now if the user want to come back to the main he can press here and of course everything will appear here and then if the user wants to see the view all products he can press here or he can press here all products will be available and then the user, if he wants to see all orders, will be available from this tab here. Now, this is the application or the web app. This is how it looks like. And one more thing is that this app is very responsive. So as you can see here, we have this menu. It's, it's not appearing anymore. And if I go to the main, for example, it would look like this. And now these four different products we have it as grid view. We have two products at the first row and two different products as the second row. Now, if I put it like this, for example, it will look like this for different products next to each other's. 
So uh, if I scroll it like this, for example, it will look like this. Now the user will be able to edit the product and delete it from this button in here, but it's also not required, but I kept it for you. So I think this is all for this tutorial. See you soon in the next one. Hello guys. In this tutorial, we will start writing the code for our app. And the first thing to start with is to set up the theme. So before that we start, we need to think about the requirements. In order to get started, we need to be aware of a few things. The theme state, for example, needs to be saved somewhere so that when the user close the app and open it again, the last applied theme will be fetched and applied. Also, we need to be aware that the theme will not affect only one screen. It will affect our whole app. So we need to find a way to do that. And here comes the state management importance. As this tutorial, I will cover a little bit of the state management, so it might not be clear enough for you to understand it. But don't worry, later on in the course, there will be a full section about state management and everything will be clearly explained. Now, let me show you this diagram. And this is simplify the state management. So we have this value in here. We need to ask ourselves who needs it exactly. If most of the widgets or some widgets require this value, we need to do upwide state management. And if one single widget needs this value, we can just manage the value in the same file. So no upwide state management needed. Perfect. Now, let me show you something. This is actually in here a brand new project. So this is why I have the app that comes with Flutter. So first of all, let me delete this and get rid of this. And I will create a new folder. I will name it screens. And then in this folder, I will initialize a new file called home underscore screen dot dart. And then I will initialize a stateless widget and import the material app. And in here, this should be scaffold just like this. Perfect. Now this file needs to be called in here and I will hit save. Of course, it will not work. We need to have restarted because we imported this file. And here it is. So now let's start implementing the code for it. First, I will delete these comments also, and I will show you something for this theme data. It has a lot of arguments. In our case, we will need few things. For example, the scaffold background color is very important to change the background color. So if we check in the main app in here, the user will be able to change the color with one button. And as you can see, it affected our whole app and the scaffold background color is similar in all the screens. Okay, so in here, I will choose the colors dot red, for example, hit save. The changes directly appeared in here. So let's find a way in order to change this color dynamically. So if it's light color, we need to show him red color, for example, or any other color. And if it's dark, we need to show another color. For that, I will initialize a Boolean in here. So I will name it as dark, put it equal to false, like this. And then we can do a check about this Boolean. If it's false, for example, let's show colors dot amber color hit save no changes will appear of course and this is as you can see it's darker than this one because this if statement is always false if we put it to true this one become a little bit darker hit save and the amber color appeared now it will be very annoying to add a lot of colors and the main dot art file so we can grab this code and put it in another file so for that, I will create a new file, which is named consts, but I will create a new folder first. I will name it also consts. 
and actually I will name this theme data better dot dart like this and to not waste time on this I will just copy it and paste it in here so what happened in this class is that I initialized a class named styles and then we initialized our theme data in here just theme, simple as that and this is actually a method where it takes a boolean so as you saw before because it's depending on this value so of course we need a boolean value to be passed perfect and this context is being used for this button color in here so that's why we need to pass it if we don't use this one we don't need the context but I will keep it perfect so this is style color can be used now instead of this theme data in here so let's say styles make sure to import it and then called the theme data and in here we need to pass in a boolean I will, in our case I will just put it true now now if we restart the application so the changes directly appeared on the screen and I will get rid of this debug banner in here so in here just say debug banner check and put it to false like this perfect so now you know how to manage the theme so let's go to the next step next step will be to save the boolean file a value somewhere in the user phone why did we choose the user phone it's because it's not an important value we don't care if it it's being compromised or something and we don't need to make the user wait a lot in order to fetch this value and apply the theme so in order to start working about that we need a library or package called shared preference so to do that we need to go to the browser and search in here or go to our website called pub.dev then search for shared preference and here it is the second one appeared and of course it's flutter favorite and it's null safety support so go to this link go to the installing tab and then we copy this value in here or you can copy this comment and put it in your terminal but in my case I will just go to the popspec.yaml file and in here under this Cupertino icons need to be pasted in here like this because the indentation matters so be careful now you hit save Control s in order to this package is being installed okay or you can open the terminal and run this command flutter packages get like this and it will install the packages for you now there's another package that it is required so again we go to the pub.dev and in here now we need to search for the package that we need to use it for the state management and in this course I will cover the provider state management the provider state management is also flutter favorite and it's highly recommended from the flutter team so that's why I like to use it so just like we did for the shared preference package we go back to the pubspec.yml file and we paste it in here now hit save and then we can start working with the shared preference in order to do that I will create a new folder named services and then I will initialize a new file and call it dark theme underscore preference or just prefs like this and of course it should be dot dart like this now let's initialize a new class called also dark theme preferences or prefs as you like I would name it like this and now we need a setter method and getter method in order to do that let's initialize a new method called set dark theme and in here we need to pass in a boolean value because as I showed you we manage the theme state by a boolean so 
in here I will name it value and the first thing we need to do is to initialize the shared preference so shared preference like this and I will name it prefs you can name it whatever you want and in here we call also the shared preference and then got and get instance like this now I still getting an error if we hover in here it's actually a future so we need to deal with future things in order to do that we just need to add a sync keyword in here and await this one later on we will heavily use the async await keywords so don't worry about it perfect now we need to use this prefs in order to set our theme so in here as you can see there is many methods in our case we need this method which is the set bool I choose this one the boolean one because our value is boolean so in here we need to pass in a key and we need to pass in a value the value already passed from this method so in order to initialize the key we need to define it outside because it will be used for the getter and the setter so static const I will call it like this and in here choose theme status I will name it like this and then copy this and I will choose this is as a key you can name it whatever you want in here but I will just choose this one now we need to write a method to get the theme value for that let's initialize a future it will be of type boolean like this and I will name it in here get theme now still make an error this one should be small but still make an error in here because it's missing return statement so once I add return in here the error is gone as you can see perfect now we need to initialize this shared preference so I would copy it from here paste it here and of course we need to add a sync keyword like this and for the return statement we need to call the prefs and there is another method to get the values which is called get boolean we need to give it the key the key is this one where we set it already in here so just like this but still making an error now the error is a little bit hard to catch but the error simply because we don't have an initial value for this boolean it might be false or it might be true so we need to do an all check we can do it just like this and we can return false which is we return the light theme by default and if you want the dark theme you can put it to true simple as that now we're done with the shared preference so we need to use this file in the provider class and I'll show you why so let's start working with the provider class in order to do that I will create a new folder called provider and then new file I will name it dark underscore theme underscore prefs uh, or provider sorry like this dot dart and in here we need to define a new class and I will name it dark theme provider like this now our main purpose of using this provider is actually to keep listening so we need to use this package the provider package so let's come back and in here we use the with keyword and there's something called change notifier this change notifier will always keep listening to the changes or we need to tell him to listen to the changes and it will become clear enough later on in the course I mean after a few seconds actually so let's get started I will initialize a boolean value and I will name it dark theme and put it equal to false initially and then we need to create a getter so in here let's initialize a get and I want to get dark theme 
and in our case it will return the upper value which is the dark theme like this now we need to initialize a setter just like we did for this file we initialized a getter and setter so in here set and I want to name it set dark theme like this and we need to pass in a boolean value and you know why already and the first thing we need to do is to change this dark theme value so we put this dark theme equal to the value like this and then we need to save this value and the shared preference so we need to initialize this class also and the provider so we can do it like this you can name this whatever you want but I want to name it like this and then we initialize it like this and of course we need to import it so import it like this and now we call this file and we can access the get theme method and set theme method in our case we need the set dark theme and we already have the value passed in here so we can just directly pass it to the method perfect now one more step to finish which is this change notifier will not know that the value of the theme is already changed unless if we add this line so this notify listener will tell this change notifier that there is something change and this change notifier will tell the whole app that there's a value changed which is in our case this dark theme value which is will affect our whole app now one more step to finish we need to manage and gather all things together and the place to do that is the main.dart file so I want you to know something about the providers the provider are actually an inherited widget and what inherited widget means is a listener and in order to listen to something you need to be the parent of that widget so for example if I want to listen to this home screen the inherited widget must be above of this home screen in our case the highest widget is this material app so the best place is to wrap this widget by a new widget which is in our case will be the multi provider the multi provider widget will be very helpful later on in the state management section and it will be clear a lot clearer than now so do not worry about it if you don't understand it clearly now now it takes an important argument which is the providers and I will come to it soon perfect now we need to fetch the theme so in order to do that we need to initialize a new method to actually get the theme so it will be a void and I will name it get current app theme like this and of course it's future and in here we need to do something so first things first we need to initialize the theme provider of course we need to import it or it's being already imported perfect so I will name it in our case theme change provider and put it equal to dark theme provider like this and our app is not constant anymore so we need to remove this and in here we need to use the initialized provider and we need to access the set method which is this one and set our theme to the thing that it's being fetched from the user memory user phone memory so here's come the 
shared preference important so we need to fetch from the shared preference so how can we do this we just call the theme provider and then call the dark theme preference like this and call get theme so we are calling this variable in here to fetch the value from this method in here so if the user already choose a value it will be fetched using that this method perfect so i think it will come clearer now but we need also to do more steps so this method we're not being called like this we need somewhere to call it and the best place in order to call it is somewhere called in state but in our case it's a stateless widget so we need to convert it to a stateful widget in order to have access to the end state method so what i mean this method is only available for the stateful widget and i suppose that you know what stateless and sub stateful widgets means so now we call this method in here like this and few more steps to be done delete this line and we need to give this provider something so initialize in here change notifier provider and it takes this constructor in here so do it like this and then open the curly braces and we return our initialized theme provider just like this now also it will not work like this we need to add one more widget which is consumer widget i'm not sure it will become clearer now but later on in the course i will use it and explain it in details in the state management section so don't worry a lot about it but in a short term the consumer is being used for one widget where only this widget need the past value so instead of initializing the notifier for the whole file we just initialize it for one widget so in our case we just need to wrap this material by something called consumer but i will choose actually a builder because it has builder function or argument so it is like this and i got an error because it takes in here three different arguments and in here it's the provider that you need to listen on so i will name it in our case theme provider and then a static child that will not get affected by this value so now let's see what inside of this theme provider so do like this we don't have much and this is because we need to specify the type of this consumer in our case it will be for this provider so now if we check we have a lot of methods in here and in our case we need to get the dark theme and this is a boolean and this is stand for this getter that we initialize it and this theme provider in here so we copy this and we paste it in here and now our app is done so i will cut the process and run the app again and in the meantime i will initialize something in here to allow the user to change the theme so to do that i will initialize something called so initialize in here something called switch list style and it has some required arguments which is the unchanged and the value so as the value we need to give it something and for the unchanged method we need to give it something in our case in here you need to give it the boolean value it will become clearer soon so open curly braces in here and for the value it's also a boolean if you put it false for example the value will be gone okay now we need to access this theme provider in order to allow the user to change the different things but now i will hit save now and see the changes in here 
we have this okay and as you can see if I press here so before that we continue let me initialize the title for it so in here let's say title initialize text and I will name it as theme hit save and it appeared in here and we need to actually add a the icon for it so you do like this initialize the secondary and for the icon we can check the value of the theme and give it the icon depending on it but for our case I will just now use the icon light mode outlined like this hit save and it appeared in here perfect now if I press on it nothing will change of course so in here we need to initialize the provider and in order to, to initialize the provider we need to say for example final theme state and it will be equal to provider dot off context but let's import the provider first so dot off and we need to give it the type in our case the dark theme provider like this and then we need to pass in the context here like this now if we call this value in here you can access all the arguments that it is in it for example set dark theme get dark theme whatever you want in our case in here we need to get the dark theme to change this icon for example so let's say get dark theme and if this is dark we need to show another icon which is the dark mode outlined like this hit save nothing will change of course because this one is light for the moment now in the unchanged method we need to add the code to allow the user to change or switch between themes in order to go to do that we need to call also the theme state and we need to call the set dark theme and put it equal to the value just like this now hit save press on it okay it's changed but something weird is happening okay so it reverted only once and it's because of this value in here so the value should be the value of the theme state so this value just call like this hit save and now this one changed I can switch between it but later on this might not work it must be a stateful widget so convert it to stateful widget and put this value in set state to force this value to be changed and apply the changes on the screen so now as you can see this icon is being changed and if I change it everything is working perfectly I will do a small recap now of how the application is working so let's go to the main we initialize this app in here which is fetching the theme from the shared preference so if the user already chose a value the last uh, chosen value will be fetched and applied in here we have this multi provider that's getting the value of this theme change provider and the theme change provider is coming from the dark theme provider and since we have this change notifier and we have this notify listener everything is listening and the changes will appear directly so we also used this shared preference which is this file in order to save and fetch from the phone memory to show the last applied theme so i hope that the explanation is clear enough for you and see you soon in the next tutorial hello guys so in the last tutorial we finished the implementation of this theme so now the user is able to change or switch between the light and dark themes so in this lecture we'll try to implement 
the bottom bar screen which is will allow the user to switch between different screens I recommend you to try to do it by your own but if you are a very beginner you don't have to do it just follow me with this tutorial and I will explain everything in details now in order to get started you might notice if you are experienced in Flutter that these icons you cannot find it in the material icons neither and the cupertino icons so for that we need to install a new package so we can head over the browser and type in or go to the pub.dev link and search for the flutter icon the package in our case i will use this one you can use this one also it's good but in our case i will just use this one for sure we go to the installing tab as usual and copy this one and then we come back to the pubspec.yaml file we paste it here and then we save our file in order to make sure that this package is being installed now as i said before i recommend to stop the process and run your app again but in practice this app doesn't make any error for me so i will not cut this process now okay so let's continue working and in order to get started i will create a new file in the screens and i will name it button or bottom bar screen like this and in our case i will initialize a stateful widget and soon you will know why i choose stateful widget so in here let's name it bottom bar screen and import the material package and let's change this to scaffold and let's give it a body and for the body we need to show the selected screen so the user as you can see he can change the screen once he press on any tab of these tabs so we need to find a way to manage this now before that we continue for sure this screen will be our main screen so let's go to the main and change this into bottom bar screen of course we need to import it now let's go back here and try to find a way in order to make or allow the user to switch between tabs great so in order to do that i will initialize a new list which is will carry on our screens and as you may notice we have four main different screens the home screen the category one one stands for the cart and the last one stands for the user so in here let's initialize a list and i will name it pages and it will be equal to the screens that we have in our case we have already the home screen we, we need another one for the category screen and another one for the cart and last one for the user so i will create a new file in here and i will name it categories the dirt another one for the cart so i will name it cart to dirt and another one for the user so i will name it user to dirt now let's initialize a stateless widget for each one so in here i will name it user screen like this for sure we need to import the material package and instead of this container in here let's initialize the scaffold and give it a body and as a body i will choose now center and give it a text as a child and i will say for example in here user screen like this we can do some styling for this text but it's not important for the moment because we will change it later on let's copy this class and go back to the categories screen and in here let's change the username into categories so let's say categories like this and then we copy it again go back to the cart and change the categories into cart like this now we have these three different screens that we just initialized so the second screen will be the category screen the third one will be the card screen last one will be the user screen and of course 
we need to add a comma in here. Now I cannot format the code because of this error in here. I will just copy this name, paste it here, and of course we need to pass in the index. Now if we want to show for example the home screen, we choose the index of 0 because our home screen stand in the index of 0. So to show you the difference I will choose 1 which is will stand for the categories screen. So now we need, when I save this file, we will see this text that we wrote it already in here. So let's go back to the bottom.dirt, format our code, hit save, and let's see what will happen. Nothing has changed. Let's restart our app. Okay, so now it's done. And as you can see, now we see the categories screen. Now this is let's make this is as a final and these variables are consts. So let's change it to consts like this and now this annoying line disappeared. So let's continue working but I will change this index to zero to show you. Now we are showing the home screen but we need to find a way in order to allow the user once he press on each tab to change this index. So for that we can initialize now a void method. So let's say void selected index and in here we need to find the way in order to change the index. For that I will initialize and I want to make selected index and I will put it initially equal to zero. You can put it equal to one if you want, for example, the category screen as your main page. But I will keep it for to zero because I want the home screen as my main page for this moment. Now I still having an error in here, of course, because the name of this function is the same name as this one. I'm sorry, it must be another name. So in here, let's name it as page. And in here, let's say set state. Oops, set state. And now, and now you noticed why we used stateful widget. Perfect. So in here, we set this index equal to the index. Simple as that. Now we need to use this method somewhere. It will become clearer soon in this course. Okay. So. Now, in order to initialize the bottom bar, the scaffold has an attribute called bottom navigation bar. So this bottom bar navigation bar takes bottom also navigation bar as variable, and it has a required argument, which is the items. OK, let's go back and hit save. I got an error, absolutely, and the error says that the item's length must be bigger than 2, bigger or equal to 2. So in here, we need to add our different items. So I will add 2 now to get rid of this error. So in our case, we need to specify the type of it, which is will be bottom navigation item. And now we start initializing it. I will convert it to const because we will not have any variable for the moment. So let's initialize a bottom bar item and it has some required arguments which are the icons and the label. Okay, so let's say in here icon. And now we need to use this package that we installed and for the first one, I will choose the icons light or it's called iconly light dot home like this. Okay. And now is the arrow is gone. Let's copy is this one. And we can paste it here like this. And we need to add semicolon here and semicolon here and now hit save and now the error is gone but we got another weird error 
okay let's restart the application and see and now it become clearer in here it says the item dot label must be different than null so if we come here to the bottom navigation bar we can check that it has a an attribute called label and we can change this to hum and for the other label so in here we can put it to categories so put it to categories and we can change this icon to categories like this now hit save and the arrow is gone now if I press here nothing is happening and nothing is getting changed okay so now we need to take benefits of this selected page so we come to the bottom navigation bar that we initialized and there's a lot of other arguments that we can pass so for the first one I will use the on tab method and pass in the selected page function now hit save and see if something will change if I press also nothing is getting changed so in here there is something called current index in our case we need to give it the selected index hit save now try and it's getting changed also but when I change or press this the screen is not getting changed this is because this index should be dynamic so we just need to change it to selected index now as you can see it's being changed so once the user press on the second tab it's being changed or this selected index is being set to one so that's why we are showing this category screen which is stand on the index one of this list okay so we can continue adding the four other labels so in here it will be the cart I will use the buy icon and for the user I will use the user to icon and change this label to user so it is like this now let's compare this bottom bar with our bottom bar so in here if you may notice we don't have label and we don't have shifting between tabs so in here when I press on a tab it's being shifted but I wanna stop this so in order to stop it there's something called type so for this type we just need to pass in bottom bar type and choose fixed it was by default shifting okay so shifting like this but in our case I want it fixed hit save let's see now it's not shifting anymore okay now we don't want to show these labels so let's say show selected labels put it to false hit save now in here it might not be clear enough but in here the home label is disappeared but we want to make it disappear also from here so in order to do that we need to add another one uh, which is the selected label so this one and put it to false and now all of it disappeared and it appeared like this perfect now we need to check for example here once I press on it it's being filled so we need to check for the index in order to make it filled or not and this is actually easy so in order to do this we just need to do a small check about this index for example for this icon in here we need to check if this index equal to zero we need to show the filled icon which is the icon the bold icon so do like this and now I'm getting an error here because this one we specify it as uh, a const but now we have this variable in here so we cannot just use a variable and keep this as a const it doesn't work like this okay so let's do the same for the others I will copy this and I will paste it here and here and here and this one will be index of 3 
it will be user2 this one will be by and it will be index of 2 this one index of 1 and in here category hit save and now as you can see it's getting filled when it's being chosen now I'm not very satisfied with the background color and these colors so we can not change it easily in order to change it we can change it also from here so we can just pass a few arguments here also so this bottom navigation bar has an attribute called background color and for the background color I want to do a check about the theme so it's dark theme I want to show a color and if it's light theme I want to show a different color so let's come back to the home screen and let's copy this provider which is stand for the theme state so we can have access to it so we need to import the classes now so import it import the provider package and now this theme state have the attribute or has the attribute get dark theme and now if it's dark we need to show a color and in our case i will show the theme dot of context dot card color like this and if it's light I want to show the white color like this hit save okay now it appeared like this let's see so it looks quite similar now okay but I still not getting satisfied with these colors and if you may notice it is different in here it looks brightening and the user can notice directly what he's chosen and can notice the other icons easily so let's try to change it for example for the light theme if it's being selected we need the black color so let's come back to our app and change it to the white theme and in here we have two different arguments the first one is the unselected icon theme so we can use it or we can use the unselected item color I will choose this one and check if it's dark color or light color so I will cut this attribute and in here I will initialize a boolean which is will be named as dark and do it like this so if it's true it means that it is dark so I will use it directly here and now I can use this if statement here also to show two different colors so I will use the colors dot black 12 if it's dark and if it's not I will use the white 10 color let's see how it looks hit save now nothing appeared anymore now let's see and we need to use now the selected icon theme or color so we need to do the same thing so I'll just copy this line paste it here and if it is dark I wanna show black 78 the color you can of course change it to whatever you want but in my case I just prefer this one and in here I will use light blue but 200 you can use this at alternative or you can delete this and use to shade 200 hit save and it appeared like this I will start the application okay so apparently something went wrong I think I switched the colors so I will just revert the colors like this and do the same for this one let's try it now see what will happen and here it is yeah now it looks perfect so now if I selected the label it will appear and it will be get filled with black color and for the dark theme as you can see this light blue color it's being available here
for the selected item color if it's dark we are showing this light blue dot shade 200 as you can see it appeared here now I want to show you one more trick but I will do it in a separated tutorial to let you think about it so what if we want to show a different up bar for each one of these screens of course we could add for example an up bar for the scaffold here do the same for the user which is I honestly prefer this way but what if we want to use it or try to manage it just from here from this file which is the bottom bar file try to think about it and I will do it in the next tutorial see you soon hello guys so as I said in the last tutorial now I will show you how to show or how to manipulate with the up bar from this file so in here we need to initialize an up bar let's say up bar like this uh, this B should be like this and hit save now an up bar appeared here let's add title for this up bar which is will be a text of course you can choose any widget that you want but for me I'll choose just text like this and here it is but for all these screens only the text up bar appeared but what if I want to show different up bars for each screen for example for this one I want to show the home screen for this one I want to show categories screen here so an easy way to do that convert this list to a map so in here for this list we open these signs and in here we type map we need to specify the map type which is will be string and strings all or I will choose dynamic like this now of course in here I got an error so for the first one the map will be like this so we need to open the curly brackets and we need to give it keys and dynamic classes so why that's why I choose dynamic in here not not string so the, for the first key I will choose page or just keep it page like this and I will give it the home screen as a page and for the title I will show it or give it home screen like this okay so let's copy this paste it four times and let's cut this one or delete it cut this paste it instead of this home screen same for this card screen and same for this user screen paste it here and add the const here so we need to get rid of this extra comma here and we need to change the titles so for this one I will choose categories for this one it will be the card for this one it will be the user now we need to fix this error of course we got an error because it's a map so we need to give it the key and it's easy so in here we just need to add like this and give it the key which is page in our case stand for this variable now let's restart the application see what will happen okay it's still working the same way but now we can manipulate this text we have this title key also which is can be used just the same way as this body so paste it here and for this key we just need to access the title key I type it wrong so now try it and it should work now we can see here the home screen we can see here the category screen card screen and user screen now this is actually a very useful way you can get benefit of it but I will just comment it in our case and I will keep this map like this for you and you will find the code attached 
to this lecture. So see you soon in the next tutorial. Hello guys, so in this tutorial, let's implement the user screen. So for that, let's head over to the user.dart file. And for the body, let's start writing our code. But we need to know how it looks like. So let me show you how it looks. So here it is. We have this widget that we implemented already before. And for the header, we have these tags with this divider in here. And down below, all of these widgets looks similar. So let's get started. Let's go back to our app. And in here, instead of this center, let's just start implementing our code. So for that, we need to use a list style. And the purpose of this list style is that it makes the work easier. If, if you look at this one, you can implement it using a row, for example, given the first child as an icon, second child as a column contain two different texts for the address title and the address subtitle. And then a final child, which is this icon in here. But for this list style, it's way more easier. You just need to pass in a few parameters and you will get this shape. So let's continue working. And the first thing I want to do is to give it a title. So let's say text in here and give it address as a title, hit save. And it appeared in here, but you cannot see it. I will wrap it in a center. So hit save now. Okay, now let's give it a subtitle. And I will say, for example, subtitle here, hit save. And here it is. Let's do some styling for the text. For example, in here, let's say style and let's add text style. And let's say, for example, size and give it font size of 24, for example. Let's hit save. And here it is. And let's give it font weight also. And let's say font weight dot bold. Hit save. And it kind of appear better now. Perfect. We could do the same for this subtitle, but I don't want to waste time. Later on in this lecture, I will do something so we don't have to do styling for each text. We can do it dynamically, so stay tuned. Now let's add the icon that appeared to the left. For that, we can add a leading icon. So for the leading icon for this address, I will use the iconly icon. So let's say icon. Iconly, I prefer to use for this case the light, you can use also the bold, whatever you prefer. And I will choose in here profile, hit save. And here it is, it appeared in here. Now for the trailing, we need to use also the chevron icon. So I will choose iconly light, let's say dot chevron or arrow to the right and hit save now. And here it is, but I prefer to use this icon. Perfect. Now we finished the first one for this address. Let's see if it looks similar. So here it is. It looks quite similar. Now for the others, I can copy this and change it for the others if I want, for example. But of course, first I need to wrap this list style by a column. And then for this column in order to work we need to remove this const from here and add const here like this okay so now let's paste the code here hit save and now it appeared like this okay so now if I want these widgets to be in the center we need to use the main access alignment so let's say main access alignment and put it to the center hit save and here it is it's working fine now, there will be a lot of repetition if I keep using the code like this. One for the address, another one for the orders, another one for the wishlets, and so on. So we need to find a way in order to reduce our code. So I will just get rid of this. And in here, let's define a widget. And I will name it list tiles. Like this. And I still getting an error because we need to return something. So when I typed return in here, the error is gone. 
Now let's paste our code like this and we need to add const keyword in here in order to remove these annoying lines. But before that I add the const keyword. We need to pass in a few arguments in order to make it totally dynamic. So the arguments will be first one will be for the title. I will pass in named constructor. So to make it clear for you. So in here let's say required string title and let's say in here string subtitle but I still getting an error because you need to add required keyword here but I will make the subtitle nullable because as you can see in here and the main app for the wishlist for example we don't have to add a subtitle for it so we only need it in one case which is for the address perfect now let's use this title here and now that these annoying lines disappeared because it's not const anymore so for the subtitle let's use it here and let's make an alt check to it like this great now we need to pass in a dynamic icon for that we say icon data and let's name it icon and it's actually required so I will just add the required keyword and we need to pass in a function I will I will do like this and say function in here and you can name it for example on pressed or whatever you want and that's it so in here let's add something so we have the on tab and for the on tab let's pass in the on pressed method that we just passed for this arrow it will be a const so let's add the const keyword here and for this icon it will be dynamic so let's add the icon here like this and let's add the const keyword here like this now we need to use this list style so instead of this list style here or you know what I will keep it and show you the difference so now we need to give the parameters for or values for each parameter so for the title I will say for example address 2 for the subtitle I will say my subtitle for the icon I will pass in iconly for example dot activity and for the on pressed I will pass in an empty function like this now I still getting an error because this is not a const so we need to remove this keyword from here like this now this one is a const so we need to add const keyword here like this and these annoying lines disappeared hit save now and here is how it looks now I will remove this and fill it up for the others so in our case we need one for the others orders wishlist viewed forget password and the logout so I will do it for each now so as I said one for the orders so in here we can use for example the bag and in here I will use the profile and for the subtitle we don't have to pass any subtitle so I'll just delete it as you can see I didn't get an error but if I delete the title I will get an error because it's a required argument so in here let's say orders hit save let's see how it looks and now I got an error when I save it that's normal let's see how let's see why what happened so if we check here for this text we didn't pass anything so now the subtitle is null already so we need to do a null check for it so let's say if it's equal to null let's say like this but if it's not let's just give it the subtitle like this and now we don't need to do a null check for the subtitle in here so here it is now hit save and the error is gone I will start the application and let's go to the user here and here is how it looks now I will change something in the bottom bar to make the user as our main app 
I mean our main screen so when I restart it the user screen will be the main screen to save some time okay so now let's copy this again and let's format our code in order to be formatted let's add a semicolon here now let's do another one for the wishlist so the wishlist like this we don't need a subtitle and let's use the heart button and for the iconly i prefer to use the iconly light one so like this hit save now and here's how it looks now we need another one for the forget password for example so forget password and let's say in here unlock this icon and let's format our code okay so let's copy this again and let's add another one for the viewed items so in here let's name it viewed like this and let's use the show icon and we need to add a semicolon in here so the format works correctly like this and we still need to add one for the logout which is will be the last one okay so in here let's say logout and in here also we need to give it the logout icon like this now hit save and here it is it's working just fine perfect now let's go to the home screen and let's copy this line and come back to the user screen and paste that code here of course we need the theme state and we need to convert our widget to a stateful widget like this and for the provider of the theme we just copy this line and we can paste it here as usual we need to import the classes now hit save and here it is okay so we did much process till now but we need to do few things more such as adding the header but before that we add the header I want to do something interesting now for example for this text as I told you before in this lecture this text we pass in here a style we could make this text dynamic also so for that I will create a new folder I will name it widget and then in this folder I will name or create a new file and I will name it text widget dot dart and in here we need to make our text dynamic now I can copy this text and in here initialize a stateless widget and I will name it text widget and we need to import as usual the material package so in here we need to return our text so to make it dynamic we need to pass a few arguments just like what we did for this function in here but we need to pass it to another file to a whole class so we need to initialize our variables here and it's actually easy so first things first we need to initialize a final string for the text which is will be the title and another one for the color a third argument for the font size and a boolean to specify if it's title or not and and max line to specify the max lines for this text and initially I will put it to 10 now of course I got an error for this constructor because we need to add the required arguments so for the first three arguments we want it for this text and the color and the text size 
we need it all, always, so we need to pass it. Like this. And we need to pass also these two arguments. So we need to add here the as title. So let's say in here, check if it's title or not. But initially, I will initialize it to false. So with that, we don't have to always pass in an argument for the text widget, unless if it's a title. So if it's a title, we need to just pass in true. Now we will manage it in the text widget and it will become more clear. So don't worry about it. Now let's add the last argument, which is the max line. And initially I will put it to 10, like this. Now I cannot format the code because in here still making an error and we need to get rid of this const in here. Now the error is gone. And let's format the code. And here's how it looks. Now in here, instead of this title, we need to use the text, which is coming from here. Let's add the color here. So let's pass in our color from here. So it's not const anymore. Let's get rid of this const. And for the font size, let's pass in the text size like this. And let's say font weight is bold. Now we do a small check about the S title variable. So if it's title, let's put it to bold. And if it's not, let's say font weight dot normal like this. Now I want to add few more arguments such as the max lines. We pass in the max lines that we have. And for the overflow, we will not take benefit now from the overflow, but later on the in the course, it will become way more important. But for the overflow, I will choose text overflow and put it to ellipses like this. For example, if a text didn't fit in here, three points will appear. This is what ellipses do. Now we can use this widget. So let's go back to the user file. And in here, instead that we pass it like this, we just pass in our widget. So we need to import it like this. And then we need to pass in the arguments. We have three different required arguments, which is the color, the text, and last one, which is the text size. And now the error is gone from here, as you can see. Now I will cut this and get rid of this text in here. And we paste it here for the text. And for the color, I want to make a dynamic color. So in order to do that, I want to do a small check about the theme. So if it's dark theme, I want to use the white color. And if it's not, if it's the light theme, I want to use black color. So in order to do that, it's easy as usual. So we can pass in the color. So we go up. And in here, let's say final color and let's name it color. And let's check on the theme. So let's say theme state dot get dark theme. And it's if, it, if it's dark, I want to use the white color, as I said. But if it's not, I want to use the black color like this. OK, so in here we got the Boolean and we are checking if it's dark or not. So if it's dark, as I said, we use the white color. If it's light theme, we use the black color. Simple as that. Now we need to pass it in for the list. So in here, let's add required color like this. And we can pass it for the color in here, like this. Now for the text size, I will use 18, like this. OK, so this was for the subtitles. So now, as you can see, we got more errors 
so because we didn't pass in this required color so let's go up and pass it so let's say in here color and pass in the color so like this let's copy it and paste it here paste it here and pass it for each of these widgets and last one here like this now let's see how it looks I will restart the application and nothing changed much so we need now to change this title text so for the title text I will just get rid of this style hit save and it looks like this so we need to use this text widget so I will copy it from here and paste it and in here we use the title as a variable and for the font size I will use 22 hit save and here's how it looks of course now we can use this title put it to true let's see how it looks and it looks like this in my case I don't really like it to be a title in here so I will just comment it for you so the footer is done now so we need to implement the header so let's go up but before that we continue I wanna show you something I will copy this widget here and I will paste it multiple times hit save and now I got an error this error is related to a overflowing error because this column is not scrollable and anyways we need to get rid of this in here so in order to make this column scrollable we need to wrap it by a widget so let's say in here single child scroll view hit save and now the arrow is gone and it's scrollable so let's get rid of the added lines like this and hit save and it back like before as we wanted perfect so now let's implement the header so let's add a divider in here hit save it didn't appear clearly so in order to put it in the center we need to wrap this single child scroll view by, the, by a center and hit save and the divider appeared here but you cannot see it clearly so we need to change the thickness for it and this is can be done by giving it the thickness in here I will put it to 2 hit save and now it's more clearer for you okay so below it let's add a sized box so let's say sized box and I will give it height of 20 to give it some margin so like this and let's add the const and here's how it looks now we can add this const also here okay so it looks like this and now we need to start writing the code for the header so in here the header is, looks like this so there is hi and my name so this can be done using row also by choosing the first text and putting another text beside it but there is a useful and a cool widget that can be used which is called rich text so above of this sized box in here we add this rich text that I told you about so let's say rich text and we need to give it a text in here so I will use something called text span and this text span widget takes few arguments in our case we need the text so I will use the high text and put or add some spaces here to add some margin between the letters of course we need to do some styling for it and in this case actually we cannot use the text widget we need to specify it by ourselves because it's a text span okay so for this text span let's add style so text style 
and let's add the color I will use the cyan color and then we need to use the font size and I will choose 27 and we can choose the font weight and put the font weight to bold like this now this style is a const so let's add the const here just like this now let's hit save let's see how it looks so here's how it looks all right so let's add in here the cross axis alignment and put the cross axis alignment to start hit save and here's how it looks of course we can wrap this column by some padding so i will wrap it here by padding now hit save and it looks better now so this text span takes children so let's pass children here and it will be of type text span like this and we need to pass in a few arguments to it of course in here as i said it will be text span and the first argument will be the text in here let's say my name and then we need to do some styling for it so for the styling i will just copy this so let's say style and paste it here and i'm still getting an error because we need to add this semicolon here okay so let's add the semicolon here and remove this from here and it should be like this perfect so for the color i will use the color here that we passed and now it's not a const anymore so let's get rid of this and we add the const only for the text style here and it's not bold so i will choose normal here and for the font size i will choose 25 let's hit save see how it looks so here how it looks i will use the w600 weight of 600 and here's how it looks great so i want to show you something else for this cool widget so for this text span widget it has a cool argument which is the recognizer it can be used as on tab for a list tile for example so if you wanna if you want the user when he press on this high do something you can use this recognizer i will show you how to use it so in here we say tab gesture recognizer like this and we call the on tab to it and for the on tab we say equal to a method like this and for example in here i will print something print for example my name is pressed here now hit save let's see what will happen if i press on my name nothing is happening so i will start the application see what if something went wrong now i press again and now it's working just fine here it is okay so something left in order to be done for this screen which is to add this text over here which is easy so let's go back to our code and go to this code and copy this text widget so back now to the rich text and under of this widget the rich text widget we can press or paste the thing that we copied and in here we use our email hit save let's see how it looks so it looks like this for the text size i feel that it's big so put it like this and i want to actually add some spacing so let's add size box here of height 5 hit save let's see okay it looks great let's add the const keyword here and i will copy this and add it in the beginning and put it to 15 hit save and now it looks like this now for this 
for this theme it looks smaller than the others so I will also copy this widget and go to this theme so let's search for a switch this style so instead of this text in here let's paste our widget and in here let's say theme like this hit save and now it looks like this of course you can make it dynamic if we do a small check about the theme state so if it's dark let's say dark mod let's say here and if it's light we say light mod like this hit save and now as you can see it's working just fine in the next tutorials i will implement the dialog for the logout and the dialog for the my address i will show you how it looks so if the user press on the address for example this dialog will appear so in the next lecture i will build this dialog so it contained this title update title here this edit text here and this update button here so try to make it by your own and i will build it in the next tutorial see you soon hello so in this tutorial we will build this dialog to allow the user to change his address later on so let's get started for that i will go back to our main app and in this list style for the address so this widget specifically for the unpressed we need to pass in the function to allow the user when he press on it to show the dialog so in order to do that we need to use a method which is called show dialog and this method actually is a future so for that as i told you before we need in here to pass in or say async and then we need to await the method like this now we say show dialog and it takes a builder so for this builder we need to pass a few things so in here we pass in the context like this and then we need to return something so in this case we need to return an alert dialog or you can return a dialog but i prefer this widget so now it takes few parameters so the first one it will be the title in our case it will be update for example so i will pass in text that says update and for sure it's a const and then we pass in something called contents and for the contents if you see in the app it's a text field actually only so let's do it so in here we can initialize text field and then as you may notice it is tall so for that let's specify the max lines for it put it to 5 and then let's give it some decorations so let's say decoration and I will say input decoration and now I will give it hint text so for the hint text let's say your address okay so once we finished implementing the decoration for it we can proceed and give it the update button in here but first before that we continue in order to access this text field value there's many ways but in our case i will use something called controller and i'll show you how can we later get the value from the controller so inside of this text field there's something called controller and we need to define the controller up and the code so i will go up and i will initialize it in here and i will say final text editing controller and i will name it address text controller like this and i will just initialize it here and i will say here also text editing controller now if you want instead of giving a hint we can say in here just text and put it to whatever you want 
and it will work I will keep it for you like this now one more thing about this text controller we need to be in a stateful widget because we need to dispose this address controller so in here there is a method called dispose so we call it and then we call the controller and dot dispose just like this now we can use this text editing controller in here now we can give a function for this text field for example on change or on submitted later on we will change it but i will give you an example now now this on change takes the text value in here so it's a string here and for example if i call the text controller and then we can access the text here okay i will comment it for you now like this and we can try it so i will start the application and see what's happening let's go back to the app press on this and here is how it looks perfect so if i remove the lines from here hit save nothing will happen we need to pop it and then if i press on it again as you can see it's for one line like this of course we prefer five so i will keep it like this and now we can add one more thing for this other dialogue which is the actions so in here we say actions and i will give it something called text button this text button take two different arguments two different required arguments actually which are the unpressed the function and a child now i will add a semicolon here and for the child i will say text and say for example update and for the unpressed i will just pass in an empty function now let's see how it looks hit save try it and here it is let's see it and the light mode and here it is it looks just same as this one okay so let's edit our code more let's just add const keyword here and add const keyword here also and then add a semicolon here to format our code okay and one more thing it will be annoying if we wrote everything or all the functions inside directly of our code what I mean is to keep the UI alone and the functions somewhere else. So I will cut this alert dialog method. So we cut it like this. And above of this list tile, I will define a function, a future function of type void. And I will say in here, show address. dialog like this now do it like this and in here we need to pass in the async keyword and now the error is gone and let's copy the name of this method search for the address go up and it should be here so we await for our function now like this and now I will start the application and try it again and see what will happen. Okay, so it's being restarted. Let's try it. So it is working just fine. Here it is. I will show you one more thing, which is in the unchanged. I will try to print this value. So in here, let's say print. And we do like this to print it and we paste our value in here and hit save now let's try it again let's type something and here it is as you can see i will type hello world for example let's see and here is how it looks 
okay so later on we will use something i will not use the on change so i will comment it for now so this was for this tutorial in the next tutorial i will try to implement the logout dialog so now since you know how to make a dialogue i strongly recommend you to implement this dialogue before that you watch the next lecture see you soon hello so in this tutorial we will implement this design dialogue to allow the user to sign out of course for now it will be just the ui so in the end of the last tutorial i asked you to implement this dialogue i hope that you will be able to implement it now let's get started and in order to get started let's identify the widgets at the beginning in here we have an image and beside it there is a text and another text in here and two different widgets two different buttons in here now for this image it can be read from the internet from a link or it can be read from your project so you add an image for your project and then you assign it to this widget and that's what i will do in this tutorial so for that i added a new folder called assets and inside of it another folder called images if i press in here i added all the required images for our project so we need to do one more step in order to be able to use this for example if i right click on any of these images so for example i will right click on this one and i will choose the copy relative path and then go to the pop spec tutorial file and scroll down and in here you see assets and examples about adding images so i will uncomment these lines and i will get rid of this line and in here paste the relative path now these slashes need to be changed and it should be like this now by this way we need to add all the required images paths here so if we need to use the wishlist icon or image we need to copy the path come here and paste it like this and of course indentation matters as i told you before now you could use this way some people prefer it and some people find it very annoying so in our case i will use another approach which is just like this so what does this mean this means that we can have access for everything inside of the images folder so now i just copy the path of the warning image for example and i can use it we don't have any more to add anything in this pop spec to tml file so let's get started and now we can write the code for this dialogue i will go back to our app and start implementing it for that let's go back to the user screen and in the logout widget so here and the on pressed we need to do something so i will create a function just like we did for the show address dialog it will be a show dialog and we need to pass in all of these arguments but it will be different widgets so let's get started for that i will copy this line and in here i will say show logout dialog like this and then we need to await the function because as i said last time it is a future if you hover on it you can see that it is a future in here great for the builder we pass in the context and then we need to return the required widgets so in our case as i said in the last tutorial also it's an alert dialog and this alert dialog takes few parameters so the arguments will be the first one i will choose title and it will be a row because there is an image beside of a column so let's say row and for the children the first one will be the image asset 
and then we can copy the warning sign image path okay and let's come back to the user the dart and paste it like this now if you add a space in here it won't work because the space will be included also in the path and there is no space in our path so be careful of this now this image widget takes more parameters you can choose for example the height I will choose 20 you can use the width I will use also 20 you can use the fit for example put it to box fit dot fill like this and there is other things that you can use okay so this is done and now let's add the text and in here let's say sign out like this it will be a const now I will copy the function name and paste it in here so we can try it I will restart the application and see what will happen okay so I restarted now let's press on the logout and here's how it looks okay it would be better if we add some spaces between this image and the text and in order to do that we can for example add a sized box here and with say for example 28 like this let's add const keyword here and in here we can use also the the text widget but it's fine i'll just use the text and hit save and now we can try it again here is how it looks there is margin between both and for the dark mode it will appear like this perfect so now we need to add the content and we need to add the other action widget so for the content it will be for the subtitle so i will add a text and in here let's say do you wanna sign out like this and then this is done we need to pass in the widgets and of course it will be text buttons and for the unpressed for this one for example we can say text and uh, we can use for example this for this button we can say cancel like this or we can use for this one the text widget in order to be able to pass on the color and other attributes so in our case let's pass on the color and say colors.cyan and then text we need to say for example cancel like this and for the text size let's say 18 like this and we need to add semicolon here okay let's add semicolon here so for the format let's format it and i will copy this widget and paste it again here and in here we say okay and let's uh, say red in here now one more thing i want the user once he press on the console to pop out the dialog so in order to do that we just need to call navigator dot pop context like this now in order to avoid errors there's a method that i use we check if this navigator can pop so we pop the function and if not we do nothing so we can put it in an f statement so for that let's say if like this and we paste in this code like this hit save and let's try it now here's how it looks now if i press on ok nothing is happening if i press on the console it should be cancelled as you can see so this was for this tutorial see you soon in the next tutorial in this tutorial we will start implementing this screen the categories screen so let's go back to our app and 
get started. The first thing I want to do is to change the index and the bottom bar to 1. So by default, the category sc screen will be the main screen. So when I restart the application, as you can see, it will remain on the categories screen. So in order to get started, I will create a new file in the widgets and I will name it categories underscore widget dot dart and then here I will create a stateless widget so let's say stateless widget and I will name it category or categories widget like this and we need to import the material package and now we can get started so the first thing I want to do is to keep this container and do some styling to it. So for that, let's add some decoration for it. So decoration, it takes box decoration and I will give it color. So for the color, I will give it for now colors dot red and give it opacity of 0.1. And I will give it border radius. So say now border radius and give it border of 16. Now let's give it border. So for the border, let's say in here border dot all and then give it color. So I will choose also the red color and say now with opacity 0.7 like this and for the width I will choose 2 like this now in the categories here instead of this text we can use the categories widget like this now, if I restart the application, this text, of course, will disappear. So I will start it and see if something will appear. Okay, so here is how it looks. As you can see, the red color in the middle and for the border of width 2. And you can play around with it as much as you want. For example, if I put this 8, it will appear right like this. Okay, so let's continue our work and now I will initialize a container to continue the work. So as a child of this container, let's say column and takes children. So the first child will be for the image. It will be a container and we need to give it height and width. For the height to make it dynamic, I will initialize something called or something related to the media query so I will initialize the width so let's say screen width and it will be equal to media query and then you say dot off context and then you call the size and then you call the width like this and that's it or you can do a different method which is for example you say size name it whatever you want and define it like this and for the size now you have access to all the attributes such as the width or the height okay but in our case we'll just use the screen width so I will just define it like this now for the height it will be 0.3 height, I mean screen width times 0.3 and it will be the same for the width like this now for the decoration we can give it box decoration to add the image to this container so let's say like this and it takes decoration image and for this decoration image, we need to pass in the image, which is in our case will be an asset image. So for the decoration image, 
you need to give it asset image like this while in the user when we implemented the logout dialog we used image asset like this so if it is an independent child we need to give it image dot asset like this but if it is decoration image we need to pass it like this okay so we need now to pass the string for the category image which is i mean the path and you can find the categories here so i will just try for example the vegetables copy relative pass and come here and paste it here of course we need to edit the slashes it must be like this okay and i will add one more attribute which is the fit so let's say fit here and put it to box fit and i will choose fill of course we need to add semicolon here and add const keyword here like this now hit save or restart the application let's see and i'm getting an error about this path okay so to fix this error we need to add this path to the pub spec to tml file so in here below of this one we need to add this path it's because it's found in a new folder so we need to do the same for the landing and we need to do the same for the offers so let's say like this and for the offers i will copy this also and change this to offers hit save now and come back to our code and see what will happen perfect so now it worked and here it is and the pubspec to tml file i still getting an error it's because i added the path wrong it should be like this now hit save again and it must work as you can see it worked perfect so now we can continue our work and for that we need to add the text that it is below the image so below of this container we can add the text widget and category name here for example and the color and our case it will be depending on the theme so we need to define the theme here i will just copy it from here so let's search for the theme and copy this and paste it here import the classes as usual and then do a small check about the theme or we can just define the color here so let's say final color color equal to like this and if it's dark let's choose white and if it's light let's choose black like this now we can use this color and for the size i will choose 20 like this and for the s title i will also use true now hit save let's see how it looks so here it is okay so it might still be annoying for you so we can change the height of the upper container which is this one and i can choose in here for example six hit save and it will appear like this but it's not required because in the next tutorial we will implement the grid view that it will looks like this so we don't need to pass in the height in here now one more thing to do is for example in here if i press on the fruits it will take me somewhere so in order to do this we need to wrap in the this container by a new widget which is the inkwell widget and i will give it on tab and for the moment i will just say print category 
pressed for example like this now I will hit save come back to our application and I will press on it and here it is it's getting printed in the next tutorial we will implement as I said this grid view so see you soon in the next tutorial in this tutorial, we will finish implementing the categories screen. So in order to do this, let's go to the categories, the Dart file. And instead of the center, let's initialize something called grid view. Now, this grid view, as you can see, has few types. In our case, we will use the count. And for the count, I will give it cross axis alignment of two, because as you can see, there is two children assigned to each others and uh, for the child aspect ratio i will use actually 240 over 250 you can use the screen width over the screen height for example and manipulate with it in order to make it more responsive but in my case i will just use like this for the spacing between the items i will use 10 and then also like this these attributes may not be clear enough for you for now but when I save it I will show you what's the difference between each one and as you can see as you saw before I mean I removed the const keyword from here because this grid view is not const in here we need to add one more child which is children and instead of this list here we can use list generate and in here we need to generate six children which is as you can see in our case we have six children and we need to return something so in my case I will return the category widget like this now I will go back to the application and I will restart it and see what will happen okay so here's how it looks the first thing i want to do is to wrap it by some padding let's see how it looks now it looks better and we need to add the up bar for it so for the up bar let's say for example up bar like this and for the elevation i will use zero and for the title it will be just a text i will use the text widget and say for example for the text say categories and for the color it will be the color depending on the theme for the text size i will use 24 and for the s title i will use true now it would be very annoying if we initialize each time the color so like we did in here we initialize the color like this but we can do another way so in the service I will create a new file called etals.dart and in here I will initialize new class I will name it etals and in here I will initialize build context and then I will create the constructor for this class which is take the context and now I will create a getter to get the boolean of the theme so let's say so for example get theme and in our case now we get the theme from this provider so from this provider here we type it here and say get theme of course I don't have much suggestions because we need to import it first so here we say now get dark theme and now this is a boolean to get the theme and I'll show you in a minute how to use this class and now we can get the color so for that I will also copy this and come back here and now 
let's say color get color and we do it like this of course we don't need to do it like this and instead of this one we use the get theme like this and we need to import the material package in order to use this now the error is gone and we can proceed writing our code so in here we need to use the adults class and in order to do this we need to instantiate this class so we can do it like this for example we can say final adults equal to adults and we pass in the context and now in this instantiation we have the color that we initialized and the get theme simple as that so for the color we can say for example in here color color equal to this like this and now we have access to this color directly okay let's hit or restart the application and the up bar appeared in here okay let's choose elevation of 5 hit save and it will appear like this now for the background color it would be better also if we do small check for the background color so in my case I will actually use the theme dot of context and same as the scaffold background color like this okay but the elevation looks very annoying so I will keep it to zero all right so here's how it looks now one more thing to be done is to make these widgets dynamic so to make the first one for example fruits second vegetables and so on so in order to do that if you may notice each one of these categories has different color so we need a list to define the colors and we need a list to define the image paths and another list to define the fruits so in order for this to be done we need to pass it in for this widget so in here we need to define the three variables which are the color image path and the category text so let's say string cat text and we need the image path and then we need a color which is the color and of course it's going to be final and now we pass it for the constructor so we add it like this and of course it's required so we need to add the required keyword like this now these items or past parameters can be used for example for this one we use the image path and it's not const anymore here so we remove it for the category name we use the cat text like this and for the color in here we use the color like this so one more step to be done is to pass in the parameters from here or the arguments so the category text the image path and the color okay so for the category text and the image path we can initialize a map just like we did for this bottom bar so just like for this map we initialize a map for example the first key is for the image path and the second key will be for the title so we can build it but to not waste so much time i will just paste it here and explain what happened so i will paste the list here like this and it's not const anymore so i will remove this and in here as i said the first key is for the image path so i passed all the images path like this and for the category text 
I name it like this and it's map of type string and dynamic and I name it like this. Now this can be used. So in here, we pass in the index, which is we have it from here and we assign, for example, the cat text and the image path. So for the first one, it will be cat text like this, which is the first key. And for the second one, it will be like this, but for the path, I wrote it like this. Okay, so here it is, this key and this key. Now I will put a static color here, so let's say amber. And I got an error in the bottom bar, it's because this screen is not a const anymore. Now restart the application and see what will happen. Okay, so here's how it looks. One more step to be done is to add the list of color and we can create a list of color here like this and name it for example grid colors and put it equal to the colors that we want. For example, colors to thread and for example colors dot blue and so on. Now I still getting an error because it's type color, not colors. Okay, but do not waste so much time. I will just paste this instead. I already created a list and I paste it in here. So it has six different colors stand for each category of these categories. Now we can use this list down below for the color. So instead of this color, we just pass in the grid color and give it the index, hit save, and it should work just fine. I will start the application to make sure. And still not working. Let's go to the categories widget and see what's happening. It's because I initialized this color here. So let's change the name of this color. Let's name it, for example, past color. And in here, let's say past color also like this. And now instead of this color here, we use it here like this. And then we need to change this name to past color. Now hit restart to the application and it should work. Here it is. It worked just fine. Now I will change these parameters to show you the difference. For example, if I choose three in here, as you can see, three beside of each other's will appear, but of course we want two. If you want to change this aspect ratio, for example, 260 over 250, it will look like this. And you can change it and play around as much as you want with it. Or you can define, for example, the screen width or the size and to make it more dynamic, as I said, but I will keep it like this. And for the cross axis spacing, if you change it, for example, to 30, the space, this spacing here will become bigger and the horizontal spacing for this one, for the main axis spacing, you can change it by this parameter. So this one for the vertical spacing and for the main axis spacing is for the horizontal spacing like this. Okay, so I will change this to 10, hit save. And for me, it looks great like this. So this was for this tutorial. See you soon in the next tutorial. Hello everyone. So in the last tutorial, we finished implementing the category screen. Now we can proceed and start implementing the home screen. So let's see it together how it looks. So here it is. At the top, we have this carousel. And then we have some other 
widgets. So for now, let's get started with this carousel or sweeper. So in order to implement it, we need to install a new package. So let's head over to the pub.dev and then we need to search for something called card sweeper or swiper. So it would be the first one and it's null safety support, as you can see. I used to use some other libraries, but it's not null safety support. And this one is very good actually. So I strongly recommend you to read the documentation for it. As you can see a lot of examples in here and you can copy whatever you want and try what you want. Okay, so for now, let's go to the Unstalling tab and copy this and come back to the pubspec.yaml file and paste our new package here, then save it. And now we cut the process and run our application again. So let's go to the home screen and get rid of this widget, the switch tile widget. So in here, we need to define something called swiper or swiper. So I can go to the readme tab and I can copy an example from here. So I will copy the normal one and do some changes for it. Perfect, so now we need to import the package. We need to get rid of this extra parentheses like this. And now let's see how it looks. Okay, hit save here. And here it is. Great, so we need to add few things in order to look like our app. So the first thing we need to do is to change this image.network to be dynamic. So in order to do that, we need to get benefit of this index in here. So let's define a list of string, which is contained the image or the images method, which is I added already in here last time, if you remember. So we need these four pictures. So for that, I already created a list. I will just copy it and paste it. So I will paste it here, which is just a list of strings contain the paths in here. So now, instead of this image network, we use image.asset and get rid of this URL and use our list instead and give it the index. Now hit save. Let's see what will happen. And here it is. So as you can see in here, we have three different pictures because in here the item count is three. We need to change it to our list. So in here, change it to our list dot length like this, hit save. And now we have four different images. Okay, so now for the pagination, I will add alignment for it. And I will choose alignment dot bottom center, hit save. Okay. And we need to add a builder for it. So now this builder will make a difference. So I will initialize something called dot swiper pagination builder, which is this one. And in here you can control the colors. For the background color, I will use colors dot white. And for the active color, I will use the red color. Now hit save. Still having an error. We need to add a semicolon here. Now hit save. And as you can see in here, there is red dot activated. Perfect. So let's add const keyword for this one. 
like this and for the control we don't need it and there's an argument called autoplay I will put it to true and now hit save and here it is and as you can see the control also disappeared but if you want the controls I will just comment it for you so I will type it again control and we say swiper control like this hit save and now we have these controls in here okay and there's some arguments you can give it such as the color let's say colors dot amber for example I hope that you can see it here or black and it will appear like this of course a uh, const like this now hit save and I will comment it for you great now one more thing is to get rid of this center and I will replace it by size box and give it a height of the screen height times 0 0.33 so in order to get it we can do something interesting which is added to the adult to get the width and the height so we can say for example in here size get screen size like this so in here we define the media query and we say dot of context dot size like this so now we have access to this size now let's get back to the home screen and in here let's say size size equal to itals dot screen size like this or I will change the name to get screen size like this better now get back and do it like this now we can access the height and the width so in my case I will use the height times so like this times 0 0.33 now hit save of course I got an error we need to restart it let's see it so here it is it looks just the same as my app in here so one more thing is that we define the theme in here so instead of typing it in this annoying way we can do like this and say get theme okay and we can do more so we say final itals like this and we say itals just initialize the constructor and now we can use this one instead of this like this now if I restart it nothing will change so this was for this tutorial see you soon and the next one hello everyone so in the last tutorial we implemented this swiper in here so now let's move forward and start implementing this widget so for now I will implement only this shape so this sale shape and in the next tutorials I will create the on sale widget and this horizontal list so let's get started so in order to get started we need to understand as usual what this widget constitute of and it's actually constitute of an image then a column in here with the text and two different buttons and in here we have the sale price and the normal price usual price and in here we have the title so let's get started so first of all I will close everything and let's go back to our app and in here I will change the index of the bottom bar and put it to zero now when I restart the application the home screen will be our main screen so now let's create a new file in the widgets and let's name it for example on sale widget like this and let's create a stateful widget 
and in here we, we name it on sale widget like this we need to import as usual the material package so at the beginning I will import or have access to few things such as the size so let's say in here for example size and let's say size equal to atolls dot get screen size okay and we might have access or we might need access to the theme so I will type it here also like this and now we can start writing our code so instead of this container I will use something called material and as a child I will give it equal because once the user press on it it will take him to the product detail like this so let's say in here equal and we need to give it few arguments okay for for me I will give it the border radius and I will choose border radius of 12 like this and I would copy it and also put it for the material and in here we need to specify the color and for the color I will choose the card color so let's say theme dot of context dot card color dot with opacity and give it value for example of 0 0.9 like this Now this equal, we need to give it the function. Of course, we don't have to implement the function now. I will keep it just like this. And now we can give this equal a child. So as a child, let's give it a column to start implementing everything in here. Because as you can see, see this image with those texts are in a column with the below text. Everything will become clearer soon. So in here let's define a column and give it the children and in here I will wrap it by some padding so let's say wrap it by padding like this and now we can start giving the children to it so the first child will be the row and in here actually we can give children for this row and the first child will be the image okay so let's say image dot network and here we need to give it the image URL in our case I will get this image this apricot image and I will paste it here and I will specify actually the cross axis alignment to it so let's say cross axis alignment and I will put it to the start like this now to see the changes in front of us I will add this widget to the home screen so let's copy this name come back to the home screen and in here let's wrap this one by a container or a column hit save let's see okay nothing has changed and now we paste our widget in here and of course we need to import it so let's import it like this hit Say if it didn't work, so we restart the application. Okay, and here it is. Great. Let's come back, and now we need to specify the height and the width for this image. So, in my case, I will use width as size dot width times 0 0.22, and I will use same for the height oops height like this and hit save and now here's how it looks and here's the color and when I press on it it will appear like this perfect so now it seems that this width is useless so I will remove it okay and for the box fit I want to show the whole image so let's say in here fit and put box fit dot fill like this 
great so inside of this row now we need to implement the text over here and as I said it's a column so let's get started so below of this image let's define a column give it the children and in here we have text widget and for the text it will be one piece or one kilogram for in our case I will just keep it one kilogram for now and of course later on it will be dynamic for the color the color we can read it as usual from here so let's come back to our code and we can define the color so let's say final color color equal to this dot color and now we have access to it and for the text size I will use 22 hit save let's see how it looks and here it is of course to make it appear better we can use for example this title and put it to true hit save and here is this it's better like this now let's give some margin between two the two widgets so let's say in here sized box and give it height of six and now let's start writing the code for the for the below icons in here so let's say in here row give it the children as usual and in here I will define something called gesture detector it's just similar to the inkwell it will allow us for example it has on tab and if the user press on it something will happen of course we won't implement it now we will implement it later on and now we need to give it the child and as a child of course it will be the icon so let's say in here icon and I will choose actually the iconly light dot bug 2 and for the size I will give it size of 22 and for the color for now I will choose the normal color of course later on it will be dynamic also it will be green for example if the user added to his cart now for the heart button it will be almost same code so let's copy this and in here let's change this one to heart for example now hit save let's see how it looks and here it is perfect now let's make sure that this is works so let's say print heart button as pressed for example let's set save let's press it and here it is it's getting printed great so few things to be done is to add this price widget here and the carrots now for the price widget I prefer to create a widget a new widget and manage the price in it because later on it will be a mess to do it for all the products so we just need to define it in one widget and use it everywhere in our app so let's say in here uh, I mean create a new file and I will name it price widget dart and start writing our code so of course we'll create stateless widget and in here I will name it price widget of course we need to import the material package as usual in here the first child it will be a flexible and I will give it flex of 2 and as a child I will give it a fitted box and for this fitted box I will give a row and now we start managing the texts the first text will be is the sales sales price so in here let's say text button uh, no we need to use the text widget 
and in here let's say 1.59 um, let's say for example like this and for the color let's say colors dot green and for the text size let's say 22 okay and now we need to add the other text so to let's format our code first and I will copy this widget and first I will add a sized box so in here let's say const sized box and give it width of for example 5 and now paste our new widget and in here if we come back we have this line through the text and this is we cannot specify it in our text widget and it will be annoying to add it but we can do it actually but I will just ignore it for now I will create a normal text and for example let's give it price like this but for the price I will put it like this because the normal price of course will be higher than the sale price and now we need to do some styling for it so let's say text style I will give it font size of 15 color of color and now for the decoration let's say text decoration dot line through like this and for the color I will just copy it from here and paste it here of course we need to import the atolls like this and now start the application and we can use the price here or below the row so it will be here like this so let's import it now let's restart the application again and see and I'm getting an error okay so we're getting an error so let's come back to the price widget and let's see what's happening for now let's get rid of this flexible widget so let's remove it hit save still not working let's restart the application okay it worked but this text is below of these widgets we want it below of all widgets so let's come back to the on sale and let's cut it from here and it should be here below of this row so let's set save now and here is how it looks okay let's see this column and add a few things to it so let's add for example across axis alignment put it to start and let's give it main axis alignment also put it to start okay so here it is one more thing left is to give it the title so for the title let's just add in here a const and let's say sized box to give it some margin between two and give it height of five like this and now we can give it the text widget so in here let's say product title for the color we have it for the text let's give it text size of 16 for example and now let's add a sized box below it so let's add it here and we need to add a semicolon so here it is now in here we have the product title and of course we can add this title in here to true hit save and here's how it looks okay so 
I think we are done for this tutorial and the next tutorial I will implement the list so it will appear similar to this one and I will implement also this text in here so see you soon in the next tutorials okay so now let's proceed and implement the list of the products on sale for that let's go to the home screen and let's drop this widget or this widget should be in a list view in our case I will use list view dot builder of course it takes an item builder and this item builder as usual takes the context and an index and we need to return something in our case we need to return this widget okay now if we hit save I'm getting an error of course we need to add few other things so in here we need to specify the item count in our case I will put it 10 we need to specify the access so we need to specify the scroll direction which is will be access dot horizontal hit save and also still having an error okay and the error is something related to the hash size so we need to wrap this list view dot builder by a sized box or column and give it height because it's inside of a column or we need to wrap it by an expanded widget but in our case it would be better if we wrap it in a sized box and give it the height because later on we will define the uh, products and show it in this screen as you can see in here so uh, let's say for example screen height or uh, if we have well, yes we have access for the size so let's say in here size dot height and let's say 0.24 now I will restart the application and it should work perfect so here it is now still a few things to be done for example let's wrap this material by some padding hit save and yes it looks better now in this tutorial also I will implement the view all button because it won't take much time so I will do it and for that let's say for example above of the list tile and the home screen above is this list of view the builder so here let's say for example text button and for now let's give it an empty function and as a child let's say text widget and for the text let's say for example view all for the max line I will give it one it's not important but yeah for the color I will give it colors dot blue and for the text size I think I will give it 20 and of course you can play it play with it as what you want so here it is okay let's add some margin between the widgets so let's say hide in here and give it value of six hit save looks great let's add const keyword here and let's add it also here like this hit save and here's how it looks in the next tutorial we will add this text in here so see you soon in the next tutorial hello so in this tutorial we will implement this on sale widget which is a text with this icon so let's get started so the first thing to be done is to wrap this list view dot builder by a row to add this widget to next to it so I will add const keyword for this one and I will wrap this sized box actually by a, a row so let's say like this now let's restart the application see what will happen 
and I'm getting a lot of errors so it's also related to size so let's wrap this sized box by a flexible widget so let's say flexible in here let's restart the application see what will happen okay uh, the error is now gone now we can write the code for that widget so it's gonna be a row because we have the text and the icon so this row will take as uh, the first child will be the on sale and I will use dot uppercase like this and for the color it will be color of red color and for the size I will choose 22 and as title I will put it to true like this and still having another we need to add this here and I'll fix this hit save let's see what will happen and here is how it looks perfect so now let's add the icon so for that let's say const icon and I will give it iconly light and I will choose the discount icon and for the colors I will use the colors.red just like this hit save let's see what will happen so here's how it looks let's add margin between these two widgets so let's say within here of five we add the const keyword hit save and here it is and one more thing to be done is to rotate this one to, uh, this widget to be vertical let's wrap this row by a new widget and this widget will be a rotated box this one it, it takes something called quarter turn and I will put it to minus one hit save and here it is now I will add some spacing between the two widgets and the row so I will use width in here of we can say 8 hit save and here it is okay so it's working perfectly in the next tutorial we will start implementing this feed widget and finish implementing the home screen so see you soon in the next tutorial hello everyone so this tutorial will be an easy tutorial we will just do a few simple things such as we will implement this title um this button in here and we'll change this image so instead of using the image.network we'll use something different to show that the image is being fetched so it would be better to show some animation while it's being fetched so in order to do that we need a new package so let's go to the pub.dev search for the fancy shimmer like this and of course it's not safety support and if you go to this link as usual read the documentation and, uh, and as you can see in here we have this kind of animation which is really good of course you can change it you have these options in here and the background will be different okay now go to the installing tab copy this then come back to the pop spec to tml file and we paste it in here of course the indentation matters save your file and then come back to the on sale widget so above of this image we need to initialize our fancy shimmer image and we need to specify the image URL now cut this paste it here we need to specify the height and the box fit so let's specify the height and let's say box fit we say in here also box fit 
dot fill like this and now let's restart the application and see what will happen let's come back to our application and here it is it's making an error and the width is being different so as I always say when you install a new package call the process and run the app again so in here in the meantime I will copy this and add it for the width and and wait for the process to finish okay so the process is now done and as you can see here is how it looks and as you can see the animation before and it looks like this and still annoying and after finishing we didn't get any error so this width so when I changed the width it appeared like this and it looks great now now if I restart the application the the animation will will appear also here it is so now in this tutorial we will implement the title and this button so in order to do this I will copy the this text button and below of this row in here let's add size box of size for example height of 10 let's add the const keyword and in here we initialize a row which is will take a text widget and below this text widget it will we will need to initialize the button text button so in here let's say browse all and now we can edit this text and say for example our product for the color we can initialize the color later as usual and for the title let's say it's title and for the color I will just copy it for example from here let's search for the color copy it and come back here and just paste it here like this now let's restart the application see how it looks okay so here is how it looks let's wrap this row by padding and now we can add a spacer widget here like this hit save and here it is let's add const keyword now if you don't like it I will comment it and we can use something here called main access alignment and put it to space between hit save and it will do the role in the next tutorial we will start implementing the feeds widget so see you soon in the next tutorial hello so in this tutorial we will start implementing this feeds widget and we will also create the grid view in order to display it in the home screen so let's get started and as usual let's create a new file in the widgets and you can name it for example feed underscore items to dart and in here it's gonna be a stateful widget you will know later on why so stateful widget let's name it also feeds widget like this and of course we need to import the material package so let's import it like this and in here as usual instead of this container let's use material and as a child for this material let's give it the equal and in here it will take on tab like this and of course let's add a color for the material and the border radius so for the color I will use the card color so let's say theme dot of context and I will use the card color like this and for the radius I will use or border radius I will use border um, of size for example 12 let's say 
and same for the equal so once the user tab on it the border radius will also appear so let's say near border radius like this and paste it perfect now we can continue and in here we have let's understand the widget so we have this image below it we have this text and this icon then we have another text with another text and text field here and this button so first of all we need to create a column so for that as a child for this equal let's create a column and the first child will be the fancy shimmer image to create this image in here so i will just copy it from here actually to not waste time so paste it here and for the size i will also get it from here so let's paste it here of course we need to import this class and now for the width i will use 0 0.2 and for the height i will use 0 0.1 like this okay so before that i continue let's go to the home screen and below of this padding in here let's paste our widget of course we need to import it let's go back to our app and restart the application and see what will happen perfect so it appeared in here now we can create the grid view now directly so I will delete this and in here let's say grid view and in my case I will use grid view dot count and for the cross axis count I will use two so I put two different products next to each other for uh, the child aspect ratio it's something very important so I will use size dot um, let's use the width over the screen height which is size dot height times 0 0.55 like this okay now we need to give it children and for the children as usual it's a list so let's generate a list and for the length i will use four and in here we need to return something so let's change this and open curly braces and in here we can return our widget just like this now hit save let's see what will happen and I got an error perfect so we need to do a few things the first thing is to add physics to it so let's say never scroll physics so this grid view will not be scrollable anymore but we will fix it and we need to add with this physics argument we need to add the shink wrap and put it to true like this now hit save perfect it appeared in here but now we have an overflow error and in order to fix this we need to wrap the upper column which is this one by a single child scroll view so let's wrap it now like this hit save and here it is it's working just fine so now we can add some attributes to it for example across axis spacing put it to 10 hit save now as you can see here we have the space between them. and i will just comment it for now and come back to the feeds item and wrap this material by padding and it will solve the issue like this it's better so now let's continue writing our code and for that we need now to create a row for this text and this icon so below of this shimmer image i will create a row let's say children and let's give it as first a child a text or let's use the text widget 
and in here let's say title for the color it's gonna be the color so I'll just get it from here let's copy it and I will paste it here for the text size I will use 20 and for the S title I will put it to true like this hit save let's see how it looks here it is perfect let's wrap it by padding also would be nice so let's say padding and I will choose symmetric padding and for the horizontal I will use 10 and for the vertical I will use 5 now hit save and here it is now next to this text we need to add this heart button and because we will use it in many places so it would be better if we make it in a different widget so it would be nice to cut this one from here and create a new file and let's name it for example heart widget or uh, for example heart underscore button dot dart and create a stateless widget and let's say heart button we need to import the material package and now paste our code here like this import this package and we need to get the color so I'll just get it from the feeds item so from here paste it here also import this one format our code and then come back to the on sale widget and instead of this code just use the heart button of course we need to import it and now come back to the feeds item and next to this one we can add our heart button like this and of course we need to import it so let's import it and restart the application and see what will happen okay nothing has changed and the on sale widget and in here we have we have it in here perfect so let's add main access alignment here so let's say main access alignment dot space between hit save and here it is it is done now let's see what's left so we have this price widget here and we have this text and edit text here so we can create another row below of this row for example so let's say row in here give it the children and let's wrap it directly by padding would be nice so like this and at the beginning we will use the price widget so let's say in here price widget hit save let's see how it looks here's how it looks and let's add for example main access alignment and put it also to space between okay and we can now create another row for the text and for the text field also so the first child will be text widget and in here will be for example kilogram or pieces i will choose kilogram for now for the color i will just keep it like this for the text size i will use 18 and for the s title i will use true also like this and it would be nice to wrap it by a fitted box for example and wrap it also by flexible because we need to wrap also the text field by flexible widget so let's say in here wrap it by center then change it to flexible like this now hit save let's see how it looks okay so we are getting an error and in order to fix it we need to remove this flexible widget from here so let's remove it and wrap this row by flexible widget so let's say in here flexible to avoid any overflow error and with that it should work so let's restart the application and see what will happen okay perfect the error is now gone and here's how it looks 
to not appear like this now we can add sized box for example here and give it width of 8 let's say hit save and it looks kinda better so let's add the const keyword for each and here it is it looks great so here's the value we can type anything we want but of course we won't allow the user to type any letter in here so we need to fix it anyways let's check here so it's almost the same we need to add now the add to cart button but of course we need to fix the style for this text in here we only allow the user to enter numbers and he cannot remove for example this one okay so he needs to edit it in such way to avoid any kind of errors so let's fix it let's add const keyword here and start fixing it so for this text form field let's add the first thing I want to add is a controller and for this controller let's initialize it in here so let's say final quantity text controller equal to editing text editing controller like this and for the initialization when we initialize the app I will put the value to for example let's say one so let's say quantity text controller to text equal to one like this and of course we need to dispose it so let's call the dispose method and call it here and say dot dispose like this now we can use this controller down there like this and we can specify a key for it but it's not important in this case but I will just put for example const value key and don't worry if you're not very familiar with the text fields later on when I explain the forms when I implement the login and sign up screen it will become much clearer so I will say in here 10 for example and let's make some styling for it so as a style I will use text style of for example let's give it the color of color and for the font size I will use 18 now we need to specify the keyboard type and in our case it will be just number so let's call numbers in here like this and for example we can add the max line to it so let's say max lines and put it to one and there's a value called enabled let's put it to true and for the format we won't allow the user to enter few cases I will allow him to enter only numbers with dots so in order to do that we need to call the input formatter and inside here we need to call something called filtering text formatter dot allow for example and in our case we call regex and as I said I want only numbers and dots so we type it like this now let's hit save let's see how it looks so here it is if I press on this comma it's, it will not work same for this one like this okay only dots will work okay so now this text is done we can start implementing the button for the add to cart so in order to get started below of this flexible or actually yeah below of this padding here so let's initialize the a text button and the function will be empty for now as a text we need to give it the text widget as usual now this text 
button we want it at the end so we can add spacer here now let's specify the text widget to it and let's say for example text add to cart and for the lines let's say one for the color let's give it color and for the text size let's choose 20 and let's hit save let's see how it looks okay so uh, we're still getting an error in here so in order to fix it let's continue writing our code by doing some styling for this button so let's add a semicolon here and let's start implementing or do the style for this button so the style we need to give it button style in here and the first thing I want to do is to change the background color and in order to do that we need to call material state property and say dot all and in here we need to give it the value and in my case for now I will use the card color so let's say theme dot of context dot card color now the second thing I want to use is something called tap target size and this one remove all padding between this button and the edges so in this case we need to use something called material tab target size and I will use shink wrap to remove all the paddings okay so still a few more things to be done is to add the shape for example so let's add the shape um, it should be here so let's say shape and say material state property dot all and we need to specify the value but before that in here we need to add rounded rectangle border so it should be this one like this and for this value let's add rounded rectangle border and for the border radius let's give it only border radius from the bottom so let's say border radius dot only and now let's say bottom left and give it radius dot circular and I will use 12 and I will do the same for the bottom right so let's say bottom right and like this now hit save okay so let's restart the application and let's add const keyword here and const keyword for this spacer and it seems that I still having an error there is many ways to fix this and in order to fix it for example in here we can use 0 0.6 and hit save and still a little bit of error or uh, overflowing so let's come back in here and search for vertical for example and in here let's remove the vertical padding and here for example now hit save and the arrow is gone and for this one let's use for example 57 try this value still an error so here it is now we need to fix it more and in order to do that let's come back to the feeds item and we need to wrap this button by a sized box let's say sized box here and give it width of double dot infinity 
now hit save you might not see the difference so I will just use in here for example colors dot black like this hit save and now here is here it is and if I remove this it will become smaller so we need it we need to fit it to all the container so this is why I did it like this okay so I guess this was for this tutorial um, and the next tutorial will start implementing the on sale screen and the feeds screen since we already implemented the 90% of it so see you soon in the next tutorial hello so in this tutorial we will do some editing for this price widget so we will make it more dynamic so once the user for example enters something here the price will change and to get started as you can see there is a lot of margin between the title and this grid view so let's go to the home screen and fix this issue first of all I will add a const keyword here and then here is there something called for example padding let's call edge and sets and put it to zero now hit save it should work yeah it works as you can see now let's go to the price widget and in here let's make it dynamic so let's pass th arguments through the constructor which is called dependency injection so let's initialize something for example called sale price and it's gonna be a double and the price the normal price and a string which is will be the text price I will name it and it might not be clear enough for you now why I'm passing this text price but we will manage it soon and it will become clearer so don't worry about it and I want I want a boolean to check if the item is on sale or not so of course we need to add the parameters to the constructor and we need to add required keyword for each so let's add required keyword here here and here like this and now I got an error here because we need to pass the arguments before that we pass anything let's just come back to the price widget and try to manage everything here before that I continue so in here we need for example to define the price to play with the price so for example let's initialize something here called used price for example and this used the price to check if the item is on sale or not so to know if we need to use the usual price the normal price or the sale price so in here we can check if the item is on sale we use the sale price and if not we use the normal price just like this now we have access to this use the price and to change to change it for example once the user enter anything here we use the use the price in order to change it here also it will really become clearer just now so in here instead of this text I will remove it and I will type like this and then concatenate string so use the use the price and multiply it by the text price so we need to convert it to an int so for that let's call int dot parse and pass it like this and then we call dot to string as fixed to to take only two letters after the point okay so I'm still getting an error here it's because we need to wrap this by parentheses because I want all of this value to take two more values after the point so this one is done now we need to manage 
the this text. So this text, I will add or wrap it by a new widget, which is called visibility. And this visibility, it will be depending on the on sale. If the item is on sale, I want to show it. If not, I don't want to show it. So just like this. Now for this price, I will also just copy this. And in this case, the used price will be always the price. Because as you can see in here, it's always the price. It's not the normal price or something like this. So this is why we try to manage the first widget. Because for example, in here, for the feeds, for example, there is some items that will not be on sale. If I show you the main app in here, for example, we only have the main price. So this one will not appear. So in here, we need to know which price are we using. Okay, I hope that I explained it very well and try to read your the code by your own and understand it. And of course, if you have any questions, just reach me back and I will explain it in details. So now let's pass the correct arguments here and get rid of this const. So for example, and the feeds item, the item is on sale, I will put it to true. For the price, I will pass, for example, 1.5, or let's say like this. And for the sale price, I will use, for example, 2.99. And for the text price, I will use the quantity text controller dot text, like this. I will also copy this and come here remove this and paste it here and for the quantity I will just pass in one and it's still const so I will just keep it like this and in here I'm getting an error because it's a string so let's restart the application and see what will happen okay so here it is it seems that it is working fine okay we have here the normal price which is 5.9 and here we have the sales price which is 2.99 okay let's try now to change something here okay so nothing is changing so let's come back to the feeds item and let's go to the text field here and let's add a method called unchanged and in this method, it takes a string value here, so you can name it whatever you want. And let's call set state. Hit save. And now let's try it again. And here it is. And apparently, when I'm doing this, I'm getting an overflow error. So when the user enters a lot of numbers, uh, again, I'm getting this error. Of course, the user will not enter this much of number to just buy this, for example. But we can simply fix it in many ways. For example, we take into consideration this price widget. This size is actually big. So we can, at the beginning, we can change this text size and put it to 18. Hit save and still, let's do more dynamic editing. So let's wrap this text by. Uh, for example flexible also and this flexible is very useful in a row to avoid overfitting so we wrapped all of these widgets row children by flexible so with that I won't get any error anymore but as you can see when I save it this text become very small so let's specify the flex to it and let's choose flex for example of 4 hit save and it's better now and for the text here let's say flex of two hit save and looks better now so this was for this tutorial see you soon in the next tutorial hello so in this tutorial we will implement the on sale screen so it will be very similar to the code that we wrote in here for the feeds 
So if you want, just stop the video here and try to build it by your own. So now let's get started. So let's create a new folder in the lib and let's name it inner screens like this. And inside of this folder, let's initialize a new file and let's name it, for example, on sale underscore screen dot dirt. And in here we can initialize a stateless widget and let's name it on sale screen like this. We need to import the material package and change the container to a scaffold. So in here, let's say scaffold and give it the body. And for the body, we need to initialize a grid count. For that, I will go to the home screen and copy this code for the grid view and paste it here. And instead of this one, we need to use the on sale widget and for the child aspect ratio I will change this one to 45 like this and for the size we don't have it so let's get it from the home screen just like this and I will get the color so do it like this. We need to import this class. Perfect. So, okay, let's use it like this. And for the list generation, let's say for example 16, and everything else will be the same. Now, let's do something interesting in order to allow the user to come to this page. So let's add something called route name. So in here we initialize static const route name and let's put it equal to max slash on sale. I will name it for example just the name of this widget like this and this one needs to be added in the main.dart file. So for that let's go to the main.dart file and in here actually below of this one or below of the home here there's something called routes this actually should be inside of the material app so in here and of course we need to add a semicolon here and now in order to be added we need to write for example the name of the uh, screen that you want called the route name then it takes the context i will just type ctx and we can write it like this const on sale screen just like this now we have access to the route now we need to make when the user press on this view all to take us to the on sale widget and in order to do that it's very easy so let's go to the home screen here and search for view all and in here for this method let's type in navigator dot push named like this it takes the context and the route name and in our case the route name will be on sale screen dot route name now let's restart the application and see what will happen let's come back press on it and here it is looks great and but we cannot scroll it so we need to fix this so let's come back here and just delete these two lines hit save and now it should work as you can see it's working just fine now what's left is to add this up bar and i want to add more thing actually is to initialize a new class which is we will manage all the global methods in it so just like we are getting the important 
values in this class I will create a new class and I will name it global methods which is will be very very important later on so create it like this and this class will handle the methods as I said so class global method let's say and in here initialize a static navigate to I will name the method like this and now let's come back to the home screen and copy this come back here and paste it import the material package of course we're getting an error for this one for the context so we need to pass it i will pass it as named arguments so let's say in here build context ctx and of course it's required and the second argument will be a string which is will be the route name like this so like this and instead of this one it should be ctx and the error is now gone now i will i will remove the static i will talk about it soon and now let's see how can we use this class so let's come back to the home screen and in here let's call this class and let's name it or initialize it like this we need to import it and now if we call this name as you can see we have access to this method here so let's cut it and here let's pass in the required arguments in here it will be the context and the second one will be on sale screen dot route name just like this and now if we restart the application and try it again it should work just fine okay as you can see it's still working but now it's very annoying to just keep initializing this class here so I will remove it and remove this here and now let's go back to the global method class and here add the static keywords or keyword so this static keyword will allow us to use this class directly so if I call this class like this and type it like this I will have access to all the methods and it should actually be like this so global methods as you can see we have access to the function in it so let's keep it like this and now if I restart it it will work also just fine here it is now let's continue our work and let's build the app bar and for that let's initialize an app bar here and let's say app bar here let's say uh, also let's define the leading and it will be an equal which is we can define the border radius so let's say border radius dot circular and I will give it value of 12 and of course we need to give it the method so the method will be navigator dot pop context to go back to the previous page and the child will be an icon so in here for the inkwell let's add a child will be as I said an inkwell uh, sorry it will be an icon and this icon I will use the icon the light dot arrow to and of course it will be arrow left to and for the color I will use the color like this and for the size we can keep it the default size which is 24 okay so let's start the application let's see what will happen perfect so here's how it looks so let's add more things to it such as for example the elevation let's put it to zero 
the background color let's say theme dot of context and choose the scaffold background color hit save now it looks way more better and we still need to add the text widget so let's add a title here and add text widget and as text let's say products on sale for the color let's give it the color for the text size let's say 24 and for the s title let's say it is a title so put the value to true now hit save and here's how it looks so let's compare it okay it looks just the same okay so this was for this tutorial in the next tutorial we will do the same for the feeds products so we will implement the feeds products screen so try to implement it by your own it will appear like this we have extra this text field here so try to make it by your own and i will explain it in details later in the next tutorial see you soon so we finished implementing the sale screen but what if there is no products on sale so we need to handle this also for now we don't have backend for our app so i will try to manage it just in this file for that i will just initialize a boolean um, i can initialize it for example in here or down below here so let's say bool underscore as empty put it true and if this is the case let's check it here and if this is the case let's return a text and of course this color changed because as empty is always true so uh, in here let's return a text and i will say no products on sale yet like this stay tuned now hit save let's see how it looks okay so here how it looks let's do some styling for this text so let's say style text style and let's give it color of color let's give it size of for example 40 hit save okay here is how it looks and let's wrap it by padding and let's choose the font weight to it so font weight i will use 700 and one more thing is let's try to do text alignment for it so text align put it to center and now it looks better i think let's change it to 30 and here it is and of course we can add for example a column wrap this in a column and add an image so uh, let's say image dot asset and i will use i have an image in here i think it should be empty image so yeah this box so i will get the path and use it here change these dashes to be like this hit save let's see how it looks and here how it looks of course i can wrap it by padding also let's choose 18 as padding and here it is it looks great okay so just this for this tutorial i will uh, change as empty i will put it to false just to keep showing the products because we'll use it later on so see you soon in the next tutorial so in this tutorial let's implement the feeds screen so once the user press on the browse all it will take us to the feed the screen so for that let's create a new file just like we did for the on sale widget and let's name it for example 
feeds underscore screen to dirt and then here let's initialize a stateless uh, widget and let's say for example feeds screen like this and import the material package and it's actually we need a stateful widget later on you will know why so in here, let's initialize the scaffold. Let's come back to the on sale and let's copy the app bar from here. Um, we can create a widget for the app bar, but it's fine. I will, I will just do it in this way. So um, let's copy and get the size and the color from here. And let's paste it here. Import the atolls class and format our code import this and also for the route name let's add it to our widget and change this it should be like this and this one should be here like this now let's add this to the route and the main so just like we did here we need to import now the feeds screen. Now let's come back and uh, let's go actually to the home screen. Let's copy this method. Let's search for browse all. And for this button, let's paste this code. And in here, let's say feeds screen like this. And let's restart the application and see what will happen. And the meanwhile, I will copy this grid view code. So here it is, of course, uh, we need to change, for example, say for the title in here and the feeds screen, let's say in here products or all products, for example, I will change this to 20. Okay, looks better. And the app bar is now done. We can add, for example, center title, put it to true, like this. Okay. Now for the body, I will choose a column and give it children. And the child in our case will be this grid view. And of course we need to import the feeds widget. Now hit save. And here it is. Now one more thing to be done is to add the text, the search text here. But before I will wrap this by a single child scroll view. Like this, hit save. It's working perfectly and if I change this to 10 for example, it will be scrollable. Okay, so now let's uh, define the text field so text field and let's add a semicolon here we need to give it the controller and for the controller i will initialize it here like this okay so we need to dispose this text controller so let's say in here search text controller dot dispose like this and it should be we need to add this null checker here and let's continue let's use it here for example search controller just like this now uh, we will use something different called fox node but i will not implement it now just to show you later on the difference so now i will use the on change and i will call set state just here and here let's say value for example and for the unchanged later on we will call a method but for now i will just keep it like this and i will do some decoration for this text field so in here let's say decoration and say input decoration like this and then let's give it the focused border and give it outline input borders 
give it border radius border radius of circular 12 like this and let's give it border side and put it to green so I will format the code at the beginning and now in here add the border and we can add the border by it's actually border side and it should be here so like this and in here we define this border side just like this and we give it the color for example in my case I will use the colors dot green accent and for the width I will use one just like this now let's add the const keyword and we need to add it also for example for the um, enabled borders so in here let's say below of this one so it should be here let's say enabled border and we can just copy this and paste it here also now format our code and below of this we can add this hand text and we can do some styling for it but for now let's say and text and uh, let's say in here what's in your mind for example now we need to add the prefix icon so in my case I will use the icons dot search okay I will save it now just to show you how it looks yes so here it is okay um, now let's add the suffix icon or the suffix button which is will be the clear button so in here this is why I used suffix not suffix icon because I want an icon button which is will take unpressed and an icon and for the unpressed uh, I will implement it now later on in the tutorial so for the icon I will use icon and say for example in here close and for the color I will use the colors dot red just like this now let's save it okay and when it's focused as you can see it is here okay so now for this icon button we can implemented now as I said and I told you I want to add something for this text which is the Fox node so for the Fox node we can define it just like what uh, we define for the text controller so let's go up here and let's initialize the Fox node so let's say final Fox node um, let's say search text focus node like this and it will be equal to focus node here simple as that okay this one should be disposed also like this now we can use it here and we can use it for the color here so uh, for example we can check if it's focused or has focus we put the color to red and if not we put it to for example color like this now we need to remove this const like this and we can save now now the color is black if I focus here it will uh, be red I will start the application and for this icon button we need to do something as I said which is will be just to clear and unfocus the search text controller and the focus node so in here let's say clear and we need to add null checker and for the fox node it will be like this 
just to unfocus so let's save let's see what will happen and how it looks so here it is when I focus it's it is red now if I press here it's uh, it's not focused anymore and it doesn't appear and as you can see this text is quite annoying the way it looks let's add some padding to it let's see how it is okay and let's we can wrap it by sized box for example and sized box and give it height of for example okay bottom bar height let's see how how it is now yes and it looks great like this so here it is okay so i think this was for this tutorial um see you soon in the next tutorial where we will start implementing this card screen so see you soon hello everyone so as i said in the last tutorial now we will start implementing this card screen so in order to get started of course we need to understand it so if the user doesn't have anything in his card so if i clear it from here this page will be displayed but for now we will implement the full page so when the user add items to his card this page for example will appear okay so uh, in order to get started we need three files the first one if uh, the cart is empty the second one if the cart is full and one to manage between these two different files it might be confusing for you now but it will become clearer soon now before that we continue let's understand what's in this screen so in here we have this header of course this up bar but then we have this header which is contains this order now button with the price and in here we have each product we have an image in here this title this controller which allow the user to change or switch between the quantities and the price in here will change when he change anything here and we have in here a column that contain two icons with this price widget in here so let's come back to our application and start implementing it for that uh, the first thing I want to do is to change the index and the bottom bar screen to 2 because it's a stand on the 2 index and now I will run the application and start writing our code and the meanwhile I will create a new folder in the screens and I will name it cart and for that I will create a widget called for example empty screen the dart and this one will manage the cart empty or the empty cart if the user doesn't have anything as I said and another one let's say cart widget the dart and you might be thinking why didn't we put it in the widgets of course you can but for me I will just keep it like this because we will have later on the viewed item wish list and orders so we can manage it in this way so uh, let's create another file which is will be the card screen the dart okay so now we can continue and in here as you can see we have now the card screen as the main screen now i will cut this and delete this file and paste it here like this and now we need to import again the card screen and the bottom bar file and remove this one okay let's uh, restart the application or we still having an error uh, no the error is disappeared so let's restart the application and see okay looks great so now let's start implementing this card widget of course it will be a stateful widget because of uh, the controllers in here we need there's a lot of changes in this screen so let's define a stateful widget and let's name it in here card widget and of course we need to import the material the dart package and now let's get started as a start i will define a gesture detector because once the user press on it it will take him to the products details so uh, let's in here say 
gesture detector of course you can use inkwell but i will just keep it like this for now let's give it on top and now let's give it a child for the child let's initialize a row so row in here let's add a semicolon to avoid errors okay now for this row we need to give uh, the children the first child will be a container to specify the color of uh, the background color of each item i'm not sure if you can see it but there's a color for each one and i'll show you now so uh, in here let's say container and let's give it a decoration box decoration and then give it a color and the color will be the card color i will keep it like this for now just to show you the difference and now let's give it border radius I will use border radius to circular 12 like this now it would be nice to display the changes directly on the screen so let's go back to the card screen and this is scaffold in here let's define a list view dot builder of course it takes item builder I will give it the context and the index as usual and in here we need to return something where we will return our card widget just like this and still having an error we need to get rid of this const in here okay and now we can add the item count I will add 10 for example like this now let's restart the application see what will happen okay and I got an empty screen let's go back to the cart widget and see so for this card widget let's wrap this container by expanded widget so let's say in here expanded and hit save okay and still nothing appear but when we give a child for this container it will appear so let's continue our work and uh, for now let's define the image for it so for the image uh, we can directly take it from the feeds item for example search for the fancy image or shimmer image like this and copy this come back to the cart widget and we can paste it as a child for this container so uh, it should be here so let's say child paste our code of course we need the size so i will come back to the field screen get it from here and get the color also because we will use it paste it here and put the adults as usual and restart the application now we should see something great so it looks like this so now we have it like this so let's wrap this also by a container and i will do some decoration for this container so instead of using the height and width here I will give it for the container and I will use 25 by 25 so let's say here 25 for the height and 25 for the width and uh, for the decoration I will use border radius so for the fancy image shimmer uh, we cannot give it border radius so this is why I added also this container so it would be nice if I do it like this and this one it cannot be directly like this we need to give it box decoration as usual and now we can pass in the border radius just like this and add a semicolon here now save the code see how it looks okay it looks kind of better but still the width is not well corrected but don't worry later on it will be okay okay so now let's continue writing our code and it would be nice if we wrap this container by a row and start writing the code for the others widgets so let's uh, continue and in here we can define a new widget for the title in here and this quantity controllers in here so uh, let's in here define a column as I said 
give it children and uh, the first child will be a text widget for the title for the color we'll keep it color for the text size I will use 20 and this title we can put it to true for example like this and for the cross axis alignment I would use so when I save it as you can see it uh, it took the width you can change it from here if you want okay as you can see but I will keep it uh, 25 and uh, for the title you can use the is title true or keep it like this for me I will keep it true for now and I will use cross axis alignment to it so cross axis alignment I will put it to start just like this now uh, we need to define the quantity controller widget so for that let's skip a margin between the title and the quantity controller so let's give it height here so height of uh, let's say 16 or 10 whatever you want let's add const keyword and now we can start defining the quantity control and it should be an arrow of course so let's define arrow give it children and in here we can start writing the code for it so I will define a material um, let's give it a color of color um, let's give it a border radius I will give it border radius of uh, let's say 12 also so border radius dot circular 12 let's give it as a child an equal and uh, this equal will take also border radius and on top function so for the on top I will write it like this and for the border radius I will put it like this okay and this equal will take the icon as a child so let's say in here icon and let's say here icons dot plus for example okay so now let's see how it looks okay so a black circle appeared in here so let's do a few more editing to it let's add a color for this icon so let's use white color hit save okay here's how it looks and uh, we can do something to manage it in the row so I will copy this again and paste it once more hit save and it would be nice if we wrap it by flexible to avoid any overflow error so let's say flexible here and I will give it flex of 2 we do the same for this one so let's say flexible and flex of 2 again hit save let's see how it looks or restart the application and I got an error of course we got an error because it must be an uh, an constraint with, with so uh, what I mean is we need to wrap this row by a size box for example and give it a width so let's say in here width 100 or uh, whatever hit save and now the error is gone but of course I want it dynamic so let's get the width of the screen and let's say times 0 0.3 hit save and it should work now restart the application and we still need to do more editing for these widgets so the first thing I want to edit is to add some padding for this material and the padding I just want it from the horizontal so let's say horizontal 5 hit save okay looks better now and for this color we have if we check here we have two different colors red and green so I will use colors dot red here or green let's say let's save let's see so here it is and it would be nice also if we wrap this icon by padding hit save now and now it looks very similar 
to this one. Okay, let's get rid of this these constants in here and add it here. Now, as you can see, we used the same widget two different times. So we can just cut it and make it or recycle it to a new widget. So I will cut it here and I will get rid of this one. And in here, I will define a new widget. So let's say widget quantity controller. I will name it like this. And in, in here, we return this widget just like this. Now, the icon, we want it as dynamic. This is a green color. We want it as dynamic also. And the on top function, we want it as dynamic. So we need to pass it in. So let's name it, uh, let's pass it as named parameters. So in here, let's say required function. And I will name it FCT. For the um, icon, let's say also icon data icon like this and for the color let's say required in here color color just like this perfect so now we can use color here we can use icon data here uh, oops we will use the icon which is icon data of course this one is not a const anymore but we can add const keyword here um, we still have to use this function so we can call it here like this okay now we can use this quantity controller inside of this row here and we need to pass in the required parameters for now I will pass in an empty function for the color I will pass in red color and for the icon I will pass the Cupertino icon so let's say icon here Cupertino icon dot minus here like this now let's see how it looks and here it is it looks perfect so now we can just copy this paste it again and it change this color to green and this one to plus just like this hit save and here it is now we can imagine how simple it is by recycling the widgets now between of these two we have a text field so let's start implementing it so for this text field in here we wrap it by flexible and a text field and a row should be also wrapped by a flexible if you didn't specify the size but it would be better if you wrap it by flexible to avoid any overflow error so uh, in here let's define a text form or we can define a text field or text form field but in our case it's not a form so let's just keep it a text uh, field so we need to define the controller and for the controller as usual we define it up here so i will just define it here and we need to add it to the init state so i will just add it like this and now we can use this quantity controller here like this perfect and for this quantity controller as text in here let's put it to one at the beginning by default let's say one of course later on it will be super dynamic if uh, if for example I want to add this grape to my cart put it to 13 and add it to the cart if I come here, it will be 13. And of course, we will manage it later on, so don't worry about it now. Now, let's specify the keyboard type. So let's say keyboard type and give it text input type of type uh, number, of course. And for the max lines, I will use max lines of, oops, max lines of one, like this. And the decoration, I will use, um, let's say, Apple decoration oops like this and for this Apple decoration I will give it the focus border only and let's say underline input border and let's give it the border side like this and just give it border side 
also like this and we can specify the site for example or style and whatever you want but I will just keep it like this for now and uh, we're still having an error so let's see what's wrong and here it should be focus border like this of course let's add const keyword here and let's hit save let's see how it looks and we're getting an error because as I told you a text field in a row must be wrapped by an expanded widget or a flexible widget so let's wrap it in here by flexible widget so let's uh, let's say in here like this flexible and let's give it flex of one for example now if I hit save it should work but I will start the application let's come back to our app and see okay so here it is here's how it looks and it is perfect okay so for this quantity text controller we need to put this equal to one we can put it like this if we didn't initialize it here it will work if I restart it now it will work as you can see we have one here but uh, we can just get rid of of it now and put it like this it's better to initialize it like this and uh, let's use uh, dispose method in order to dispose our uh, controller so let's dispose it like this now we restart the application and it should work just fine and uh, in here we need to do some more editing such as we need to use rig x to not allow the user to enter any point for example and in order to do this we need to add the input formatter just like we did before so we add it like this here and in our case we just want numbers so it will be like this um, now hit save now if I come here try to press on the dots or this one it won't work okay now let's continue and if I come here and remove this as you can see the one is being removed and if I put it later on like this it will make an error so uh, to avoid errors by uh, removing the quantities we can add in here for example the unchanged method below of uh, this input formatter so let's say in here unchanged and as usual we can call set state and put the quantity text controller to something so uh, in here like this let's call set state and put the quantity text controller equal to one for example but this is the case would be only for if the text is empty so we need to do a check if it's empty or not so we can do a check just by checking if v is empty like this and v is coming from this one which is the text field string okay so we paste it here now now if I restart the application and press here try to remove it it won't work as you can see okay so uh, if the user want to change it he can change it like this now okay it's working perfectly now uh, let's add else here to avoid errors also and let's say return just like this now later on of course we will manage it after building the state management and the firebase to our app okay so the code is almost finished now we need to add this column in here so let's uh, get started so for that below of uh, this sized box let's add a spacer because as you can see those widgets are in the end so let's add a spacer here and let's save it let's make sure that there is no error okay it made an error okay so this spacer should be not here it should be below of this column so let's try it like this and it's working just fine so let's continue our work and let's define a column and let's say children and let's wrap this column by padding 
like this and now we can continue working and actually the padding I also wanted it just from the horizontal so let's say 5 here like this okay so let's continue and in here we can define an icon button or we can define for example an equal and uh, let's give it on tab and we need to give it a child and as a child it will be the heart button um, let's see how it is here so the first button will be for the removal of the product the second uh, button or icon will be the heart so let's say in here as a child let's give it an icon and this icon as I said it will be the Copertino icons dot let's say cart badge minus this icon and the color will be red and the size will be 20 like this let's add const keyword now let's save it and see how it is cool it looks like this and uh, now we can copy this equal or we can just directly use the heart button so uh, we created a heart button so we can just use it here hit save here it is of course we, are, we can add sized box here and give it height of for example 5 to add some margin between both now we still need to add the text widget so uh, for the text widget we can in here say text widget give it um, any price so let's say price or let's give it any number and uh, for the text size I will use 18 and for the max line to make sure that it will be always on one line when the user add a lot like this so uh, we make sure that it's always like this now let's uh, add a const keyword here save the application and here it is so i guess i will just end this tutorial now and in the next tutorial we will implement this up bar and this header in here okay um okay before that we end it let's make sure of uh, something let's go up and uh, to the container so and uh, and here for this card color we can choose for example background color hit save and here's how it looks so let's wrap this one by padding now hit save and it's uh, kinda better but the padding is too much so let's put it to 3 for example and now it looks better and for the color I will just keep it the card color of course you can choose any color that you want and uh, I will use opacity also of 0 0.5 let's try it like this still too much I will choose 3 instead of 5 okay so here it is um, for me it looks perfect like this and of course you can change it as what you want so see you soon in the next tutorial all right so as I said in the last tutorial now we will implement the header and the app bar um, but before that we continue it's uh, these buttons are actually very big for me so we can change this to 4 for example and we can add a size for these uh, icons and I will choose for example 20 let's hit save and see how it looks it looks good but I will change this to 6 for example let's see and here it is it looks better and now we can add some margin to the right for this column so let's check uh, it should be here so inside of this row we can just add sized box and give it width of 5 for example and it should be enough hit save and here it is now let's continue the work and start implementing the card screen to implement the upper and 
the header so uh, for the upper it will be very simple so let's see how it is we have this title we have this action button here so let's find this action button so uh, let's define an up bar here and then say actions and then say action button and for the icon we can give it icon the light or bold dot delete like this and uh, for the color we can give it the color so let's get it from here so let's copy these and paste it here import the adults class as usual like this and we can now use the color here okay perfect so let's go back to our app and save let's see how it looks here's how it looks okay so uh, now I don't really like this icon I will use something also there's iconly something called broken this one yeah, this one looks way more better let's specify the elevation and the background color so uh, in here um, below of the actions or we can just define it here so let's say elevation zero and background color let's use the theme dot of context scaffold background color and for the title let's say we can just say for example text widget and for the text let's say cart and in here should be the quantity let's say two and then the color I will use the color the S title I will put it to true and the size I will use um, let's say 22 now let's see how it looks and it seems perfect so now let's implement the header and in order to implement it we can just implement it above of this one so we need to wrap this list view by a column hit save and i'm getting an error a list view inside a column must be given a size or we can just wrap it by an expanded widget so let's wrap it and by an expanded widget and restart the application and it should work just fine here it is it's working just fine and it's scrollable also so now in here we can just start defining the widget so uh, for that let's uh, define a container let's give it width of infinite width like this let's give it height of uh, size dot height times 0.1 like this and for the color we can use the scaffold background color or we can just keep it like this okay now hit save let's see and here it is we have something here this margin it's for the height of this column now we can specify the child and for this child we will have a row because we will have the text and then or uh, the button and then a text next to it so here we have this button and then we have this text so let's uh, inside or the children will be the first one I will create material in order to create the button of course we can use the elevated button but I will just keep it as a material to give you diversity of widgets so uh, in here let's say colors.green let's give it border radius and for now I will use border radius and say for example 10 and as a child we'll give it now the equal and of course this equal we need to give it the border radius so in here equal like this and then give it the border radius and then we need to give it the on tab so uh, 
in here let's say on top and of course it will be empty for now and the child will be a text widget where it will say order now for example like this and uh, of course this is the text for the size I will use size of 20 for the color I will keep using colors.white and that's it hit save let's see how it looks and here it is let's wrap this uh, material for example by padding or we can just wrap this text by padding hit save and now it looks great now let's wrap this row by padding also hit save and looks way more better now now uh, I will change this to sized box and instead of writing this widget here we can just put it as dynamic widget also so let's say in here widget and the checkout I will name it for example and in here we return our widget just like this and this one we can use it here simple as that now we don't have access to this size because it's a stateless widget so uh, I will just copy it and paste it here and pass in the context and it would be better if we keep it as named constructor so uh, named parameter I mean so let's say required in here and pass in the build context and I will name it ctx just like this now let's restart the application or uh, still having an error because we need to pass in the context here and now the error is gone now let's restart the application and we still need to do a few other things so here it is now we need to write the code for the total here so uh, next to this material inside of the row we can just also initialize a text widget and say for example in here total and give it the value for example any value that we want and for the text size I will use 18 hit save and here it is but the title I will put it true to give it this bold shape and we can add a spacer in here okay so now it looks perfect so uh, it is like this and for the padding I will use symmetric padding and horizontal give it value of 12 and hit save now and for this text widget I will wrap it by a fitted box also to avoid any overflowing errors and everything is working just fine now let's add a semicolon here and semicolon here then format our code so uh, this was for this tutorial in, uh, in the next tutorial we'll start implementing the product details screen so uh, it is very familiar to what we did before so I, re I strongly recommend you to try to implement it by your own uh, in here we have this fancy shimmer image in here we have this text with this heart button which is you have the code for it and this one will be text widget and in here we also have this text widget and this label in here and this widget you already have it from the cart and this button you, you already also have it we just created right now for the order now and it will be very simple and it will be a good practice for you to implement it so see you soon in the next tutorial